Are you ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studios, this is the Steve Malzberg Show. Be a part of the action by calling 855-777-9660. That's 855-777-9660. Or email Steve at Show at Newsmax.com. Here is Steve Malzberg. The two systems went against George Zimmerman that he, had, he can't understand. You guys, the media, he was like a patient in an operating table where mad scientists were committing experiments on him and he had no anesthesia. He didn't know why he was turned in to this monster, but quite honestly, you guys had a lot to do with it. You just did, because you took a story that was fed to you and you ran with it and you ran right over him. And that was horrid to him. All right, folks, welcome to the Steve Malzberg Show, Wednesday edition. That, of course, Mark O'Mara, the uh, lead defense attorney for, the, uh, for George Zimmerman in his, uh, in his trial. And I'm happy to say we are joined uh, once again by Mark O'Mara. Mark, thank you for taking the time. We appreciate hey, it. Steve. Yeah, great. Good talking to you again. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. I, 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 I want to talk, uh, first of all, what you said there and, and the media. You know, during the course of the trial, first of all, did you, you're allowed to, uh, you're not the jury. Did you watch TV during the trial at all or you had no time? I really had no time, so I didn't watch very much at all. I did get some of the high points from some of my staff, but I just really was getting ready for the next day every evening. All right, even you know, even those who who were in so-called Trayvon Martin's corner um, admitted, and, and almost to a person, with few exceptions, um, that hey, this isn't going well for the prosecution. That the the, right. the the prosecution witnesses are really turning into defense witnesses, and and then. It'll, then the turn from Saturday night after the verdict, Mark, the, the racism, race, how could this be? How could he not be held accountable? What's going on here? As if they were shocked, these same people who yeah. admitted there was no case here really for the prosecution, they are in attack mode and they're still in attack mode. How do you, what, to what do you attribute that? Well, you know, it's funny because I, I had this sort of trial hypnosis. I thought that everybody in the universe was listening to every word of the trial. It was a great trial. It was a fair trial. And the jury deliberated. They came back with the right result because it was obviously self-defense. And I really thought that now we finally got the story out. People would realize that there would be calm, there would be peace, they would accept the verdict, and we'd be done. What I didn't realize uh, was that people who want to be angry about this case are never going to be anything angry about the case. They're not going to look at the facts. They're just going to say they had the mind made up from the you know twelve year old Hollister photograph and the two hundred seventy five pound angry George photograph, and they were never going to change their minds. And unfortunately, they're going to maintain that anger for as long as they want to. Yeah, no, that that's absolutely right. And you know, it's almost one thing for the media to keep up what they're keeping up. But let me ask you, you know, there was a word association game, only I don't want a one-word answer, uh, that was played by Headline News. And let me start with Angela Corey. When Angela Corey was asked, George Zimmerman, and was asked for a word, she paused, as you well know by now. She paused for about 15, 20 seconds, and then had the utter gall to say, murderer. That day, that day that she said that, I had Alan Dershowitz, Andy McCarthy, Paul Callen, Lee Sweel. Four of them, I had five, four of them I, I revealed this to. They hadn't heard it yet. And to a person, they were outraged. What was your reaction when you heard this? Well, I, m my mother would have used the word peasant she would, because that to her meant somebody who just, just has so little class in how they view something. I looked at that and I said, first of all, you're denigrating a jury verdict, which is completely inappropriate in our system. And by doing that, you're denigrating the entirety of the system, a system that not only are we as lawyers sworn to uphold, but that prosecutors have an additional level of, of obligation to maintain the, the faith in the system so that we can trust people to prosecute us properly. And then she comes out and says, in effect, the jury verdict was a travesty, I guess. I don't accept it. I don't believe it. He's not not guilty. I still find him guilty. It was horrible. It was inappropriate. And I think that she needs to answer for having done that to the system and to my client. Ah, and I'm glad you asked that because when I told Dershowitz about it, when I told Paul Callen about it, both of them right away said, especially Dershowitz, that you and George Zimmerman have a, a, a lawsuit for defamation 
a, a, a strong, strong lawsuit. Do you plan on pursuing that? Well, you know, I'm a criminal defense attorney. I'm not a First Amendment attorney. But, you know, I remember from law school that you're not supposed to say something about somebody that is patently false with malice intent. And, you know, she's a prosecutor. She knows the case. And by the way, she knew the case way in the beginning. She knew that she couldn't prove a second-degree murder case, and she knew that it was self-defense, it would seem. And even with that, she follows whatever political motivation and suppression she has and decides to, in effect, sacrifice an innocent man's freedom to some other benefits that have nothing to do with the criminal justice system. Well, I hope somebody asks her to explain that. Well, one more question on this, and I'll let, and I'll let it go. Uh, if George Zimmerman would not use you, he certainly... Has he discussed with you, or do you have any indication that he is interested in pursuing or might pursue a case against her uh, for defamation? Um, not a specific conversation, but he is extraordinarily frustrated with the way he has been handled in the last 16 months. And whenever I say something like that, people go, oh, but we have Trayvon Martin, who's no longer here and passed away. I'm not being insensitive to that. But look, we have to be realistic. If, in fact, George Zimmerman acted in self-defense, with the, which the jury has now said, then why do we not give him some of that benefit and say to him that he has rights, too? And he can't be visited hatred by a prosecutor who lost the case fair and square. Yeah. Now, the whistleblower, and we're talking to Mark O'Mara, George Zimmerman's attorney here on the Steve Malsberg Show, the fired employee, uh, the IT guy who came forward and gave you information, uh, cell phone records, uh, uh, t t tweets, etc., from Trayvon Martin's yeah. phone, uh, which uh, he took the stand and uh, be, uh, away from the jury. He was fired the day the case went to the jury. He's now filing a whistleblower lawsuit. Um, wh what's your take on that? Well, first of all, let me clear something up. He never gave us any records. He didn't, he didn't give us any, any information at all except to tell us that, to his attorney, that there may have been some information out there that we didn't get. And then we put, we connected all the dots, but he didn't give us a report, give us a record or anything. Having said that, you know, in January, they had those reports. That is conclusive. We got them in June. That is conclusive. That is a discovery violation of Brady proportions. Brady means a lot to a criminal defense attorney, but the Constitution requires, even without request, that they give us information which exonerates my client. This is not the first time that they hid information from us. This is the tenth time, and actually only the tenth time we know about, because in 30 years of practice, I have never filed a motion for sanctions against a prosecutor for discovery violation. I filed six in this case. Uh, I, it's it's an absurdity. So is it incumbent upon you to file uh, for these sanctions against the prosecution, and have you or will you? We have a motion pending. The judge, if you might recall, deferred it until after the trial at the point where I called Bernie Delorionda to the stand. She, and the judge decided not to allow me to do that at that point. So we have a motion pending. It's going to be amended, and it's going to be set for hearing. All right. Uh, let, let me move on to, to uh, Eric Holder. Eric Holder... Ha came out and said, among other things, uh, in front of a uh, a a crowd at uh, uh, what are you, a sorority crowd of, I believe, very prominent black women, that I know you're troubled by the verdict. I'm troubled by the verdict. He talked yesterday about stand your ground laws, which I don't think had anything to do with this case whatsoever. And and there were reports, and Mark, they appear to be very legitimate reports, that the Department of Justice held a conference call with civil rights groups and people who have an axe to grind here saying, hey, they even set up an email uh, reportedly. If you have anything on George Zimmerman, if you have anything to help us bring civil rights charges against George Zimmerman, give it to us. What, what the heck is going on in this country? Look, he is the Attorney General of the United States. Just like the prosecutor, he has an obligation to respect a well-founded jury's decision in this case. And they denigrate the process and therefore the system when they placate people for political motivations. The Justice Department, through the FBI, did an investigation starting in, I think it was May of 2012. They interviewed over 40 people, and to a letter, they found not only no racism in George's heart or blood, but they found non-racism. They found people who said, 
George is meek, mild, easygoing. He's the guy who went to Sanford to complain about the beating of Sherman Ware, a black homeless guy, by the white cop's son, which is now well known. He's the guy who was mentoring two black children. He's the guy who, from 6 to 12 years of age, two black children lived with him and his family while the mom was going to work every day. And he's the guy who took a black girl to prom. So I think what they're doing is trying to placate the anger that's out there by saying, yes, they're going to do an investigation. They know they're not going to find anything because the FBI did everything they could to find it before and never did. All right, so Mark, how likely, you could use a scale of 1 to 10 or give me your own words, how likely is it that you believe either George, that George Zimmerman will have additional child's fi charges filed against him by justice? A one, and it's one rather than zero because in the absurdity that has been this case, if you would ask me that question 16 months ago, would he ever been charged with second-degree murder, I would have said, well, I guess it's a one because those charges never should have been filed and federal charges never should be filed. One more, one more. Jesse Jackson says Emmett Till, uh, Medgar Evers. Trayvon Martin, they're all the same. Tavis Smiley says black babies are being shot dead in the streets. The Washington Post does a whole story about echoes of the past uh, with the, the Zimmerman acquittal by a southern jury, quote unquote. Um, I, I, you don't have to convince me there's no race here, but what's the motivation of the people that are doing this, do you believe? I believe that they're trying to put a square peg into a round hole to try and resurrect um, uh, capital for an ongoing civil rights movement. And then, look, I, I've represented young black males for my, the entirety of my career. And I'm okay with having to have a conversation, with wanting to have a conversation about how that's happening and some inequities in the system. It's just that George Zimmerman is not the guy for it. He's not the case for it. Get your cost there. off my clients. And then we'll have a conversation. All right, listen, Mark, I know you got to go. Thank you so much for your time, sir, really. And, and, and congratulations on a, while your heart breaks for the uh, Martin family, I know. But I, oh. I, lo I loved when you said you're always, you, you, so what'd you say, the jury, you, you fancy that when you speak, the whole world is just uh, amazed or why? What did you say? What was that you <laughs> no, said? No, somebody asked me what the best time, best, my best point to the trial. I said, look, I'm a trial attorney. I think every time I open my mouth, it's the best point to the trial. There you go. <laughs> That's just trial attorneys. All right, Mark, thank you. All right. Great Take care. You, again. you go. Take you care. too. Thank you. That's Mark uh, O'Mara, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I thought it was a, a, a good interview. So on a scale of 1 to 10, he believes there's a chance, a 1 chance that civil rights violations will be filed against his client. And he says it's one because he never would have thought there'd be a trial for second-degree murder in the first place. So um, he's a good guy, and uh, we, t we appreciate him uh, coming on. But what's going on, what's going on, the race baiting, the NAACP, Tavis Smiley, oh, oh, I mean, the list, you know, just keeps growing. Uh, what I wanted to ask him... You know what I wanted to ask him? It's not even a question. I want him to weigh in on the lie. The lie that he was told to stay in the car. That's my hang-up. And, and I forgot. Out of everything, I forgot that. But just go listen to the 911 tape. He was never told to stay in the car. He was egged on, says Jura B-37. Not to be confused with Jura B-52 or B-17. On the Steve Malzberg Show. The Steve Malzberg Show. In 2013, half of your friends, family, and neighbors may lose their jobs, all while you are robbed of 90% of your life savings, investments, and home's value. Controversial economist Robert Wiedemer, who was the only expert to predict the recession, has released a startling video with shocking evidence that the powers that be have tried to ban. But that hasn't stopped 50 million people from getting the truth. Watch it at Aftershock911.com. Aftershock911.com. What is Lignet? Lignet is knowledge. Lignet is power. Lignet is global. Top level officials, U.S. intelligence officers, national security advisors, foreign operatives, all reporting directly to you. What is Lignet? Lignet is confidential. Lignet is sensitive. Lignet is security. What is Lignet? They're the ones taking the world's pulse. If you're not in the know, you're not on Lignet.com. You've been briefed. Judging from everything you hear, you think all cholesterol is bad, but that's not really true. 
You need a certain amount of cholesterol to maintain good health. The problem is that too much cholesterol in your blood contributes to a plaque, a fatty substance that narrows the coronary arteries that feed blood flow to your heart. Picture your coronary arteries as a four-lane highway. If one lane becomes blocked, traffic still flows well. Two lanes, no major problem. But if a third lane becomes blocked, that spells trouble. It's the same way with your coronary arteries. And when plaque slows their blood flow to your heart, this can even cause a heart attack. The good news is that when it comes to cholesterol, lifestyle changes can pay off big time. Even a small reduction in plaque can be like opening up another highway lane. Suddenly, blood flow that was stalled can go forward again. Changing your lifestyle does not have to be hard. And in fact, here are three ways to help you start lowering your cholesterol. Snack on nuts. Nuts are probably one of the easiest and tastiest ways to lower cholesterol. Walnuts and almonds are among the best. Bulk up your diet with fiber. Choose whole fruits instead of a fruit juice, brown rice instead of white, and if you're eating a baked potato, be sure to leave the skin on. Choose fish. Fish contains cholesterol-fighting omega-3 fatty acids. I'm Dr. Chauncey Crandall, and thanks for watching this Heart Health Minute. Remember, it's never too late to prevent or reverse heart disease. Right now, I invite you to discover your own risk for heart disease or even a heart attack by taking my quick, free online quiz at www dot simpleheartest.com I love you son so it hurts when you say I hate you I'm your mother I'm tired of you disrespecting me when you don't get your way I work hard to make sure you have everything you need I should be able to ask you to get out of bed in the morning without a fight so from now on things are going to be different I ordered the total transformation program we're not going to scream and fight anymore I'm going to tell you what to do in a different way, and you're going to do it. You're not going to call me ugly names anymore, and if you do, you're going to get consequences that'll keep you from calling me ugly names. We're not going to do things your way anymore, son. We're going to do things the Total Transformation way. Get the Total Transformation free. Just order the program, tell us how it works for you, and you can keep it for free. Call 1-888-577-9520. 1-888-577-9520. Call now. Call 1-888-577-9520. 1-888-577-9520. Can you find the Steve Malzberg Show? Everywhere. From your smartphone to satellite radio to Newsmax Live TV to Roku, we have you covered. Here is Steve Malzberg. All right, folks, welcome back. In just a little while, uh, we're going to talk about well, just at the bottom of the hour. We're going to be joined by my congressman, Scott Garrett, and uh, we're going to talk about um, the uh, Trayvon Martin situation. We're going to talk about uh, the, uh, the uh, behavior of uh, Eric Holder. We're also going to talk about the nuclear option which was uh, averted in the Senate yesterday because of a so-called agreement, but Scott Garrett's not happy about that. And I'm going to ask Scott Garrett why it is that this Congress, the Republican-controlled House, will not, has not, and I've heard nothing about, defunding, why won't they defund parts of Obamacare? You know, they, today they're going to pass another repeal of, of the whole bill, but, you know, that's great, but it's not going to be repealed. Not under this Congress, but the House has the purse strings. Why not say, well, guess what? We're not going to fund the IRS agents who are going to, you know, who are needed for Obamacare. I haven't heard anything about that. And I keep asking people when we have health care advocates on or when we have congressional correspondents on. And I always say, where, when are they going to do something? How many years has it been? And everybody says to me, that's a good question. Well, I'm going to put it to Scott Garrett. Um, also, uh, some news. We're going to talk to Howie Mandel. Howie Mandel, uh, America's Got Talent, uh, the whole thing. He has a new show. He's not the host of it, but he's producing it. Uh, a guy named, um, uh, oh boy, okay, I don't have the, uh, the, the new host's name here, but we're going to have both of them on. It, it's called um, Deal With It. It's called Deal With It. 
and it's a it's a show where uh, people go to a restaurant together. They take one of them aside somehow and give them a, a little earpiece and give them money if they'll do things that they're told to do in their ear, earpiece to the friend that they came with, like pour water on them or tell them a lie about something, and they get money for everything they do. So it should be an interesting show. It's on TBS tonight. Howie Mandel, I'm looking forward to talking to him. Actually, we, we did that uh, yesterday, and um, and um, so I'm going to be dressed a little differently, but we'll do that later in the show. Also, Daniel Pipes. Daniel Pipes, founder and director of the Middle East Forum. We'll talk about Egypt. We'll also talk with him and with Eric uh, Dregens, TV and media critic for the Tampa Bay Times, uh, about this. Do we, do we have that, uh, that page, that uh, cut 15, I think? Look at this uh, if you're watching at Newsmax.com, and I'll tell you what it is. Rolling Stone Magazine. Rolling Stone Magazine has put up a cover, has, has done a cover. A full page, you know, headshot cover of the Boston Marathon bomber looking like a rock star. And it says, the bomber. How a popular, promising student was failed by his family and fell into radical Islam and became a monster. They're making this guy into a rock star. And there's a whole effort afoot on Twitter to, uh, to, to get people to stop subscribing to Rolling Stone magazine and not buy Rolling Stone magazine. This is a disgrace. Imagine you're a victim of this, this terrorist scum and you pick up, you, you pass a newsstand and you see this picture of this creep, this murderer. See, this is a murderer. This is a murderer. They wouldn't put George Zimmerman up there and he's not guilty. But this is a murderer, and I haven't heard the left go crazy about this. Because it's not black and white, you see. It's not black and white. All right, folks, we're coming back with Scott Garrett. You're not going to want to miss this interview, I promise, because I'm going to ask the tough question on health care on the Steve Malzberg Show. The Steve Malzberg Show. 3 a.m. and you're up again for the third time. It's not just affecting your sleep, it's interrupting your daily life. Frequent trips to the bathroom due to an aging prostate is a common concern, but you can now do something about it with Prostate Revive. Doctor-formulated Prostate Revive is an all-natural dietary supplement packed with 15 powerful ingredients focused on improving prostate health by targeting the two main sources of prostate concerns, rogue testosterone and inflammation. And now, in this limited-time radio offer, you can try Prostate Revive absolutely free. That's a free bottle, a 30-day supply of Prostate Revive, risk-free. Plus, if you call right now, you'll also receive our free report, A Doctor's Guide to a Healthy Prostate. Call now for details on getting your free bottle, plus our doctor's report. Call 1-800-659-REVIVE. That's 1-800-659-REVIVE. Don't be a victim of an aging prostate. Start getting the sleep you need and get your life back with Prostate Revive. Claim your risk-free bottle now at 1-800-659-REVIVE. Revive. Are payday loans ruining your life? If you have two or more payday loan cash advances, listen closely. You may be eligible for a program that payday loan companies don't want you to know about. This program will get payday loan companies out of your bank account and put an end to the payday loan nightmare. Call for free information and find out if Payday Loan Support Center is right for you. Payday loan companies usually trap you into paying rates as high as 700%. We understand payday lenders' tactics. Don't let them take advantage of you anymore. All you need is two or more payday loans to qualify. We can help even if you're behind in collections or have bad credit. Internet payday loans qualify for this program as well. So call 800-250-5084. That's 800-250-5084. The call is free and the consultation is free. Don't miss out. Call for your free information on payday loan relief. 800-250-5084. That's 800-250-5084. Again, 800-250-5084. Guys, you've heard about Ageless Male, the natural supplement that helps boost testosterone levels within normal healthy ranges. But now, the best testosterone product is even better. New and improved Ageless Male can help you feel more like you used to in your active life and in your romantic life. Because our upgraded formula has been clinically shown to increase your drive, desire, and performance. That's right, guys. Ageless Male has been clinically shown to boost performance. Cancel your plans this weekend. 
you're staying in. If you're ready to recapture the drive from your youth, now is the time to try Ageless Mail because it's available risk-free. But you must call now. Just call 1-800-460-9790. Be the guy you used to be. Just call 1-800-460-9790. 9790 1-800-460-9790 1-800-460-9790 Drug, alcohol, and gambling addiction can be devastating for you and your loved ones. Don't let the disease of addiction ruin everything you've worked so hard for. The Treatment Helpline has helped thousands of people just like you take control of their addictions and live healthier, cleaner, and happier lives. You are not alone. Now there's hope. The Treatment Helpline has helped people just like you overcome their addiction. If you or a loved one is suffering from a drug, alcohol, or gambling addiction, let us help you today. Call 1-800-813-9821. Our seasoned addiction treatment professionals can show you how to use your private health insurance to help cover the costs of this life-changing program. Call now and get a free confidential consultation. 1-800-813-9821. That's 1-800-813-9821. Help is only a phone call away. Call 1-800-813-9821. That's 1-800-813-9821. This is not your typical Scream Fest talk show. No. 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 This is the next generation of talk radio. Here is Steve Malsberg. And welcome back to the Steve Malsberg Show. Joining us uh, now is my congressman. I love saying that. Uh, Congressman Scott Garrett from the great state of New Jersey. He, of course, is a Republican. He is on the Finance Committee. He's also chairman of the Congressional Constitution Caucus. Hello, sir. Greetings, and it's good to be with you. Thank you so very much. Well, it's always great to talk to a friend, and uh, I appreciate you coming on. All right, before, in your capacity, and we're going to talk about what happened uh, with the nuclear option being averted in the Senate yesterday, uh, and, and you, uh, you rightfully feel that this was just a, uh, 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 you know, skirting the Constitution, uh, but just doing it a different way. But in, in your role as, uh, as uh, chairman of the Con- uh, Congressional Constitutional Caucus, let me ask you about what's been going on here mm. uh, with the Trayvon Martin uh, verdict. Uh, in the Aftermath of the verdict, I might have expected Sharpton and Jackson and, uh, and you know Emmett Till to be put in the same uh, vein as uh, as Trayvon Martin, which to me is just uh, disrespectful to Emmett Till and what it represents. But when Eric Holder goes out there and says, "I'm troubled by the verdict," and I know you are too, um, when uh, when the prosecutor who lost the case goes on national television and says he's a murderer, I mean, what's going on here? No, I, I think that is, uh, um, well, they're not living up to their roles, I guess, uh, Steve. And, but then should we be surprised with regard to our uh, attorney general? Because he has never um, lived up to the expectations and the role and the position that uh, he was appointed to and confirmed to by the, uh, by the president. Um, no, once you, once you have been uh, acquitted by a jury um, and found not guilty, um, that is not the place that of any official, um, prosecutor or otherwise, or attorney general or otherwise, to then to step in and say they have a different opinion on this. Because, look, he still has, the attorney general is being asked to do what? To continue the uh, investigation of these cases, which is uh, also, uh, some would say, un- unheard of as well. Yeah, and, 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 and they're also, they, they had a conference call reportedly on Monday where the Justice Department, the FBI, and civil rights groups and groups with a political interest here, and they all, they were all told, find, basically, find me anything. Right. Find us anything, the Justice Department allegedly said, that we could, that we could use, you know, in a case against George Zimmerman. I mean, what, I, I, this is the kind of, this is a kangaroo Justice Department, and it's frightening. It, it, two, 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 two takeaways I get from this whole thing. One is dealing with the rule of law, or the lack thereof, and, and that's what you're seeing now, and that you're um, explaining now with regard to this administration and the Justice Department. And in so many other areas we've seen out of this White House, a disregard for law, um, that makes the United States what it once was, a, a pinnacle of democracy and freedom and liberty uh, throughout the world that the rest of the world could look to to say this is where the rule of law uh, is always abided by and we should try to um, aspire to it. So that is a 
one problem. And the other problem is just the way that everyone focuses on this, I'll call it tragic circumstance, because someone died and it is a tragedy, uh, and yet all those same um, so-called civil rights leaders that you just mentioned a moment ago, where is their outrage? Where is their running to the microphones? Where is that any of their uh, clamor for justice in all of the other um, murders uh, that we are seeing going on in Chicago and inner cities and elsewhere? Um, sh shouldn't they be focusing on some of those uh, at the same time or to the same extent or even more so than what they do on this one and this one only because it's uh, politically expedient for them to do so? I, I couldn't agree with you more. All right. Uh, now, now in, in your capacity as chairman of the Congressional Constitutional Caucus, again, uh, you issued a statement yesterday after the, the Senate reaches a deal to avert the nuclear option. And, and, and I read it and I said, to, I was sitting next to my colleague, I said, so the Republicans caved again. Yeah. And he said, yeah, basically just different wording. I mean, so, so Harry Reid and the Democrats threatened to do something, uh, change the rules of the Senate, probably illegally, and to avert that, the Republicans said, oh, okay, you can have what you want, just don't change the rules. And, and you say that it's, uh, it was de facto, a de facto nuclear option that Reid used, and, and to me it was blackmail. Yeah, and it, it, is, um, it is disappointing, and now the day later when you begin to read some of the comments by those who voted in favor of it, you begin to scratch your head. Look, how did the deal come down? The deal came down by saying, okay, we're going to look over here at the NLRB, the National Labor Relations Board. We understand that entity has existed for years, but we don't like the way you appointed two guys to it, so we have, want you to withdraw those. Then we're going to look over here at the CFPB, uh, Consumer Protection Financial Bureau, which, as Republicans, we're totally opposed to and find it unconstitutional. And we also really don't like the guy that you appointed there, but we'll let that one stand. That is the one that's going to have a devastating impact upon our economy and uh, going forward. And for the Senate to have, for Harry Reid to take this action and the threat um, is wrong. And for the capitulation that we have seen here is also, as you said, leaves some people scratching their head. Yeah, and, and and so, but but this is what it is, right? I mean, this is uh, this is what the leadership in the Senate decided to do, and I, and guess who I am told brokered this, uh, the the great brokerer, Harry uh, uh, Harry Reid, um, uh, John McCain. Yeah, the two of them, I guess, got together, um, and, and agreed to it, um, but they were not able to do it without other people, you know, coming around them and supporting it. But you know, as we often say, you know, what would have happened if the shoe was on the other foot? And and you know, the deal would not have been broken then. And hopefully in 2014, 2015, if we do take back the Senate, I'm wondering whether the, uh, the Senate minor, uh, Democrat minority at that time, Harry Reid, will he be so willing to uh, cut the same deal when uh, um, we want to try to move things through the uh, Senate at that time? Yeah, right. Well, uh, yeah, right. Yeah, good, good, good luck with that. All right. Now, uh, two quick things here. Well, not quick, but uh, uh, Chairman Bernanke uh, testified before your committee today. Sure. Um, you know, and, and basically, if, I, if I'm correct, I'm not a financial expert, what I took from it was basically status quo, basically things uh, aren't good enough for us to stop with the, you know, the pumping up the market and buying the bonds, uh, but when we get there, we, we could stop. So, I, I mean, what did, you, what did you get out of Bernanke's testimony today? No, I, think, I think you hit the nails on the head. I mean, one of my takeaways was when he made the comment, I wish I had the exact quote in front of me, where he said, our asset purchase programs have made the government money, meaning all these bond buying programs that he's engaged in have made money. Well, if that's so good and that's such a, the way we should be going, then I guess we should take the, um, the Federal Reserve and go from their $3 trillion balance sheet and make it a you know, $300 trillion balance sheet, let them buy up bonds continuously, and they can fund the government for us. They right, we'll make more money, right. We'll make up more money. <laughs> we'll wipe out the, uh, the, de um, the deficit and then the debt in, in several years. Um, but that's not the role. You know, they, they shouldn't be there saying, patting themselves on the back and saying, hey, we're making money. They should be saying, you know, we've really gone further than any of the creators of the Federal Reserve ever dreamed that they would be with all their quantitative easing. And the other point to take away is, is that, no, no, it's not market fundamentals that is creating the volatility in the marketplace right now, you know, going up and down like you see so much. It is the actions of the Fed. People are looking there and uncertain what they're going to do tomorrow. That creates the volatility and so un the uncertainty in the marketplace. All right. Now, health care. Was he asked about health care? And then let me also ask you about health care. I know you're voting today. You're going to uh, vote to, uh, you know, dismantle the whole, uh, cancel yeah. out the whole health care plan. But my answer, my question to you after you answer about Bernanke is, 
Why don't you guys, and when are you guys, and will you guys vote to defund part of this? Say, we're not going to give you the funding for the IRS to do this. When will we see concrete action from the Republicans in the House saying, you're not getting the money? No, I, I agree with there, and I supported um, efforts to do so. Um, what can I say? So um, leadership, Republican leadership in the House does not see that as a strategy. And here's, uh, I'm talking for them, not saying right, that I agree right. with this. The idea is if you say you're not going to put X number of millions or billions of dollars in this bill or that bill, um, then what happens? Well, the president will say, what, I'm going to veto the bill, um, which case the funding for all those programs or potentially the entire government comes, runs out. And then you come to the proverbial threat of a shutdown. Now, you and I have talked about this in the past, and I would say that at certain issues that are uh, constitutional or otherwise, you should be willing to go to that line and be willing to take that step. Um, in other words, willing to shut down government o over certain principles right. that are very important. So are you telling me, Congressman, that there are no plans among the leadership of the Republican Party in the House to, to withhold funding for parts of Obamacare, as many of us were led to believe, and, and which would result in, in a, probably a confrontation with the president if he vetoed it, but if it were passed, would result in, um, you know, real uh, dismantling of, of health care, that the, the Republicans do not want that fight and will not go that route? Is that what you're telling me today? <laughs> well, I, I can't speak for leadership. All I can talk to you is what history is uh, but there are, has there been any indication, any no. talk that this will happen? No. I mean, the, Obamacare has been in place for a little while now, and we've gone through several appropriation cycles, and that has been, uh, you know, an avenue that some of us have supported that we'd go down, um, but it has not been uh, received positively as the approach. To shut down the government, look, you go all the way back to when the president first came in, that would probably, in my book, was our best shot of, you know, drawing lines in the sand. And as you moved away from that, as far as Obamacare goes, um, there's been less willingness to even uh, ha have that discussion, despite a few of us still constantly saying All right. this is well, an important issue. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, but I, I thank you. And, and Senator, uh, Senator, maybe one day. Uh, uh, Congressman, as always, thank you very much for joining us, sir. It's always a pleasure. Thank Take you. care. Congressman you. Scott Garrett, ladies and gentlemen, 5th Congressional District, New Jersey, my, my district. Huge news here. I knew they were cowardly. I knew they didn't have the stomach for it. I knew they didn't have the guts for it. Don't look for this leadership, John Boehner, Eric Cantor, at all, to defund Obamacare, because as Scott Garrett just said, he believes they don't want that fight with Obama. Yay! On the Steve Malzberg Show. The Steve Malzberg Show. If you or someone you love is struggling with addiction to alcohol or drugs, then you must listen to this message because there is hope. No matter what addiction you or your loved one is coping with, you are just one phone call away from real help. Recovery Hotline makes the healing process simple and affordable by matching people to fully certified and experienced inpatient facilities that are right for their personal situations. Call 800-668-1286 now. Don't wait another day. Money does not have to be an issue. Most insurance is accepted. Just call 800-668-1286. 1286 today. Recovery Hotline's mission is to help you or someone you love begin the healing process and get back a healthy and sober life. And we can even help with family interventions and travel arrangements. One phone call is all it takes to get back the life you or your loved one deserves. The call is free. The help is real. Call 800-668-1286. That's 800-668-1286. 800-668-1286. Again, 800-668-1286. Hi, this is Dick Morris. Obamacare is taking full effect this year with over 15,000 pages of regulations. You need to know how this law affects you. That's why you should get your copy of Obamacare's Survival Guide. It's easy to read and the best guide to the new law. Even if you're currently insured or a senior on Medicare or a business owner, a medical profession, or really any citizen, you need the Obamacare Survival Guide. In it, you'll find about hidden taxes, fees, and fines, including a 40% tax on some health plans. I warned you about Obamacare. It's rationing Medicare cuts and will trigger doctor shortages. Now the Obamacare Survival Guide gives you the simple steps to protect your family. So get the Obamacare Survival Guide at bookstores everywhere. It's already a number one Amazon bestseller. Or get our special $4.95 offer and save $15 today by going to Obamacare911.com. Obamacare911.com. That's Obamacare911.com. 
Obamacare. President Obama's massive health care law is taking effect this year. With over 15,000 pages of regulations, few even know what it means. Now, the Obamacare Survival Guide by Nick Tate gives you the shocking facts about this law. It's a step-by-step -step guide on how you can protect yourself. Already the New York Times bestseller, Every American Needs to Get the Obamacare Survival Guide and find out about the new taxes, hidden fees, fines, Medicare changes, business rules, and why doctor shortages are likely. Donald Trump says the Obamacare Survival Guide is a must-read for anyone worried about getting good health care for themselves or their employees. So get the Obamacare Survival Guide. It's at bookstores or get our special offer at Obamacare911.com and you'll save $15. Go now to Obamacare911.com. Obamacare911.com. Attention hip implant patients. Are you in constant pain? Have you received a letter from your doctor about your implant? Have you had or need a revision surgery? Do you have high levels of metal, chromium, or cobalt in your blood? Over 90,000 hip implant devices have been recalled due to defects and failures resulting in revision or replacement surgery. If you have a recalled hip implant, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call 800-460-0920 to see if your implant is affected by the recalls. If you or a loved one has a defective or recalled hip implant, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call 800-460-0920. That's 800-460-0920. Protect your legal rights today. Call 800-460-0920. This is an advertisement not valid in all states. Paid non-attorney spokesperson. iLawsuit.com is an advertising group that represents lawyers advertising their services and is a free matching service for consumers. It is not a law firm or lawyer referral service. Hi, I'm Joan London, and if you're worried about your parent or a loved one living alone like I was, and you want reliable senior care information, then call A Place for Mom the nation's largest senior living referral service. You'll get free information on assisted living, Alzheimer's care, nursing homes, even important financial information. They had obviously researched every place, not just given me names. Really? Yeah. They found me a place for what she could afford, and it was magnificent. We're now very confident that she's safe, and they just helped every step of the way, and I can't thank them enough. So if you're struggling to find reliable senior living information, Call a place for mom. This is a free service, and you can trust them to help you. If you're struggling to find reliable senior living information for your mom or dad, then call or go online to get the free help you need during this turbulent time. Call now, 800-908-1254. 800-908-1254. The Steve Mossberg Show is just a bit different from the other radio shows. We have TV cameras. Watch the show at Newsmax.com or listen on your favorite radio station. Here's Steve Mossberg. And I know I'm not everybody, I'm just one person. I'm a human being. But for the gift that God has given me, and for whatever I mean, I've decided today that until the stand your ground law is abolished in Florida, I will never perform there again. And I know I'm not everybody, I'm just one person. I'm a human. All right. Um, <laughs> we heard him the first time, Stevie Wonder, announcing at a concert yesterday, I believe, or the day before that uh, as long as Florida has a stand your ground law, he will not perform there. Uh, this is a, uh, a, a mantra, I guess, uh, that's been taken up uh, along with calling you know, the decision in the Zimmerman trial racist. Um, now they're, they're also trying to, to use it as uh, an attack against stand your ground laws. Uh, you heard the, uh, the uh, attorney general yesterday talking to the, uh, before the NAACP also questioning stand your ground laws. Um, unless I'm severely mistaken, stand your ground laws had absolutely nothing to do with the defense of George Zimmerman. He did not invoke it. He did not hold a, a, a hearing to try to uh, have his uh, charges thrown out based on stand your ground laws. Uh, joining us now to talk about all of this is Larry Pratt, Executive Director of Gun Owners of America. Hello, Larry. 
Hi, Steve. You know, the uh, uh, the wonderful reaction of Mr. Wonder makes you wonder if liberals get anything right. Uh, it was so plain. It, all you had to do was to look into what had happened uh, during the whole course of this, and people would have known. No, uh, Zimmerman was specifically given the opportunity to invoke Stand Your Ground, and uh, his through his attorneys, they said, no, uh, this was self-defense. There was no ground. Uh, he was on his back on the ground. Uh, it wasn't, uh, wasn't an issue at all about standing his ground. He would have loved to have been standing on the ground. Right. He was on his back on the ground. <laughs> right. Now, they, they, they may invoke that um, to try to get a civil suit dismissed if one is filed, but notwithstanding, um, this is uh, – let me ask you what I asked Mark O'Mara before about the, you know, feigned outrage in calling this a racially charged verdict, a racially charged case, because anybody who is intellectually honest cannot believe that. Uh, so what right. do you so – do you, so is this just another example of the media, the usual suspects running with this, you know, anti-gun theme or anti-stand-your-ground yeah. theme? I, I think that's exactly – they're trying to use the, the race card to move against guns. They really don't want us – walking around with a gun, able to defend ourselves. And it really doesn't matter whether we're somewhere within the United States where they don't want us to have a gun, because that just leads to more violence, or whether it's Benghazi where they withdrew armed guards protecting uh, the diplomats in that uh, town uh, and, and shortly before, like two or three weeks before it was attacked and Americans were killed. They just think being able to defend yourself is counterproductive and bless their hearts if they don't want to defend themselves be my guest i'm not going to put them in jail for being stupid right uh, but but leave the rest of us alone and you know i, I think that, I, I, I think i think there are some on the left and in the media and when i say on the left it's, it's almost you know it implies that uh, who, right. who may be frustrated but are not willing to say it in other words if the race baiters had not gotten involved in this, then they could have perverted this to be solely about stand your ground, solely about how evil guns are. Again, not not anything that would be intellectually honest, but that could have been their cause. But that whole cause, even even though the attorney general you know spoke about it, it's it's dwarfed, it's diluted, it's it's pushed aside by race and and the calls from the groups like the NAACP and Sharpton and Jackson, et cetera, uh, and the commentators that I uh, got Tavis Smiley saying black babies are being gunned down in the streets. Yeah, they are, but usually by it's by black. right. But my point is, I think they missed an opportunity here, the media and the left, to go after guns and go after this law around the country. Um, because they acquiesced to the race baiters instead of saying, look, this case was judged on the merits of the case. Uh, it had nothing to do with race, but let's talk about this or that. They, they, can't, they can't blame it on everything, is what I'm saying. Uh, well, they're trying, but uh, no, intellectually, they're not going to get away with it. And I think probably the, the absence of any real uh, outcry from grassroots America uh, may indicate that... The, to the extent that people were interested in the trial at all, it was pretty easy to see what was going on. When I thought the most outrageous thing, now maybe somebody will have seen something even more outrageous, but for me, when uh, that uh, attorney that, to his shame, Governor Scott, stuck on uh, the prosecution team, said, you know, uh, these are just minor uh, injuries, the abrasion on the back of the head, the broken nose, kids suffer that. All the time. When uh, they, is that, is she, was that Angela Corey or was it the male uh, guy who said, uh, this is post trial, I think, who said that uh, mothers send kids back onto the playground with those injuries? Yeah, it's one or the other. <laughs> They're both equally uh, brainless and clueless. Uh, and yes, that's true. Mothers do. Uh, but this was just a little bit different. The kid didn't keep getting on the bicycle and, and then jumping to bang his head onto the, uh, to the uh, cement. Uh, this was somebody doing it for him repeatedly, according to the one eyewitness who uh, has a house about 18 feet from where this was occurring. But not only that, Larry, and we're talking to Larry Pratt, the president, executive director of Gun Owners of America, here on the Steve Malsberg Show. Of course, 
the disingenuousness again. You don't to, to defend yourself under self-defense laws. You don't, especially in Florida, as we're talking about, you don't even have to suffer an injury. The person never even has to touch you. Um, it, it, it makes it a stronger case, I guess, if you're touched. But to concentrate and focus on the injury, oh, it's not so bad. Um, you know, a broken nose, a bashed head, a possible concussion. Oh, that's not so bad. But in, in, in comparison to not even have to being touched, it's pretty darn bad. Yeah, it's pretty outrageous to uh, suggest that, it, well, first of all, to play that theme, they insisted on showing the picture of Cherubic, 12-year-old um, uh, Mr. Martin, and instead, the picture I saw of him, which is hard to find, but I finally found a picture of him lying on the ground. That was one big guy. Yeah, no, but well, he uh, was much taller. I, before We only got a minute, so I want to ask you, Larry, where do you think this will uh, lead to in, insofar as you know, going after the fight against guns, the fight against stand your ground laws. Do you think any inroads will be inroads will be made by the, the those who uh, seek them? I kind of think that if anything, these guys have shot their wide, and this could very well boomerang on them. They couldn't pull it off before six women, uh, and they. And by the way, I just learned today that they rejected the prosecution rejected a, a, black, a black male because he watched Fox News. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It What's sounds like a, it sounds like to? a sick joke, but it's true. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. So they were hoping, I'm sure, that the women would somehow, you know, the maternal instinct and that poor little child being uh, uh, shot like that in cold blood. And, well, and, and instead, they're mo most of them are mothers themselves. Most of them are women themselves. Most, some of them are gun owners themselves. They understood the situation that Zimmerman was in, although it is a tragedy, of course, that uh, Trayvon Martin lost his life. Hey, Larry, I thank you for the call, sir. Thank you for the call. Thank you for the time. Appreciate it. I uh, thank you for letting me before your microphone. Thank you. My pleasure. All right, Larry Pratt, ladies and gentlemen. On the uh, next side, Governor George Pataki, former governor of New York State, is being sued by a bunch of prisoners. And we'll tell you why when we come back on the Steve Malzberg Show. The Steve Malzberg Show. If you need to lose weight and would like to get paid for it, that's right, I said get paid to lose weight. Just listen to the following announcement. The makers of GCE Green Coffee Bean Weight Loss are looking for real testimonials from real people and will pay you per pound to meet or exceed your weight loss goal. Until now, the secrets of green coffee's fat-burning power has been limited. But thanks to Dr. Oz, the secret is out. And now, this authentic green coffee bean fat burner is available in easy-to-take tablets. There are no expensive meals to buy or strenuous workouts. Simply take one tablet before each meal and record your progress. Only the first 200 callers are guaranteed to be accepted into the program. So if you're serious about losing extra weight and want to earn extra cash for fitting into your skinny jeans again, call 800-383-9230 now. Call 800-383-9230. 800-383-9230. Space is limited, so hurry and secure your spot today. 800-383-9230. Some conditions apply. 800-383-9230. 800-383-9230. If your prostate is giving you problems and your doc says it's just part of getting older, be wary. Renowned physician and author Dr. David Brownstein thinks this is baloney. He's discovered a link between aging and prostate health and believes prostate concerns do not have to be an inevitable part of aging. That's why he created Prostate Revive. Hi, I'm Dr. David Brownstein. I personally formulated Prostate Revive to include the most essential natural ingredients available to help promote a healthy prostate gland and optimal urinary function. The producers of Dr. Brownstein's Prostate Revive are so thrilled with the positive feedback from satisfied customers that for a limited time, they are willing to send you your first month's supply free. Plus, call now and you'll also receive Dr. Brownstein's special report, A Doctor's Guide to a Healthy Prostate. For details on getting your free bottle, call 1-800-596-REVIVE. That's 1-800-596-REVIVE. Take control with Prostate Revive. Call now while supplies last to claim your risk-free bottle at 1-800-596-REVIVE. Bye. 
Hello and welcome to your Newsmax Now update. I'm John Bachman. A big deal just reached in the Senate late last night clears the way for a couple of President Obama's nominees to key administration posts. That includes Richard Cordray, who was confirmed today he will now head the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. The deal also means that Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid will avoid using the so-called nuclear option, which changes filibuster rules, to get those appointments in place. Also in Congress, House Republicans are trying to capitalize on a couple of recent setbacks with President Obama's signature health care legislation as they vote to strip the law's requirements to purchase insurance. What you're seeing now is our individuals and groups from different camps from both sides of the political aisle saying, wait a minute, this thing is going to be a nightmare. The move comes after union leaders who initially supported the law sent a letter to the White House expressing concerns that the law creates an incentive for employers to keep employees' work hours below 30 hours a week. The White House's announcement also that it was pushing the law's employer mandate back a year because businesses complained it was too complex. The White House says the law's problems are being overblown and Democrats argue bumps in the road should be expected with a plan of this size. And authorities in Panama sees a North Korean cargo ship and inside bury under tons of brown sugar. They find old missile parts and equipment, all of it undeclared, which means this may have been a violation of U.N. sanctions. The ship was being tracked by U.S. intelligence since it left Cuba. And get this, before the seizure, there was a brief standoff during which the ship's captain tried to slit his own throat. Well, it remains to be seen if U.S. Attorney General will bring federal civil rights charges against George Zimmerman, but Holder was more clear about his own feelings on these so-called stand-your-ground laws. While speaking at the NAACP convention in Orlando, Holder said the issue is a personal one to him because he has a teenage son and worries about his safety. These laws try to fix something that was never broken by allowing and perhaps encouraging violent situations to escalate in public. Also, the Reverend Al Sharpton is calling for a national day of protest. His civil rights group is planning rallies and vigils in 100 cities on Saturday in support of federal civil rights charges against George Zimmerman. And 83 survivors from Asiana Flight 214, the one that crashed in San Francisco, say they plan to sue Boeing, the plane's manufacturer. The multi-million dollar lawsuit is focusing on mechanical problems with the engine controls, emergency slides, and seat belts. The next up on our Newsmax Now update, Fed Chair Ben Bernanke before Congress, his comments on the economy and what they may mean for investors. Plus, Senator Mike Lee on this week's rules debate in the Senate, why he says it was all just a Democratic distraction. Next. Hey guys, do you know your testosterone level? You should. Each year, declining testosterone robs more of your energy, drive, motivation, and even your ability to perform in bed. Take control of your testosterone today. Write this number down because ProGene, the leader in dual action testosterone supplements, is now giving you a free supply if you call today at 800-592-4834. If you'd like to feel closer to 20 than 40 and get back that energy, drive, and confidence, call now to try ProGene risk-free. Don't believe us? We'll even prove it works. Ask about our at-home testosterone test kits and see for yourself what ProGene can do for you. Be one of the next 100 callers. We'll triple your order and send you a full one-month supply of ProGene for free. A $70 value for only the cost of shipping and handling. Call 800-592-4834 for details. Know your level and kick your drive back into gear with ProGene. Call 800-592-4834. That's 800-592-4834. Again, 800-592-4834. In 2013, half of your friends, family, and neighbors may lose their jobs, all while you are robbed of 90% of your life savings, investments, and home's value. Controversial economist Robert Wiedemer, who was the only expert to predict the recession, has released a startling video with shocking evidence that the powers that be have tried to ban. But that hasn't stopped 50 million people from getting the truth. Watch it at AfterShockVideo.com. AfterShockVideo.com. Obamacare, more than a trillion in new costs, hidden taxes, fees, big Medicare cuts, doctor shortages. How can we survive? To know Obamacare is to survive Obamacare. The Obamacare Survival Guide tells you everything you need to know to protect yourself, your family, your business. The Obamacare Survival Guide at bookstores everywhere. Special internet only offer right now at Obamacare911.com. Thank you. 
And welcome back. During highly anticipated testimony before Congress today, Fed Chair Ben Bernanke says the bank's stimulus measures will continue with employment relatively high and inflation relatively under control. But Bernanke added that things could change quickly if the economic picture changes as well. Wall Street gave a lukewarm reception to the announcement. And the debate about Senate rules may seem trivial to people outside of Washington. And during a Newsmax exclusive with Senator Mike Lee, he says that's exactly how it looks from his perspective inside Washington as well. It was wrong for us to even be having this discussion because it's a distraction, first of all. There's really no substance behind what he was complaining about. This has been your Newsmax Now update. I'm John Bachman. Now here's the Steve Malzberg Show in New York. Are you ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studios, this is the Steve Malzberg Show. Be a part of the action by calling 855-777-9660. That's 855-777-9660. Or email Steve at malzbergshow at newsmax.com. Here is Steve Malzberg. All right, folks. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, we talk about stories uh, that are particular to a given area, whether it's in New York where I am, you know, Elliot Spitzer, um, uh, 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 Wiener, Congressman Wiener, running for president, all that kind of stuff, because it, it transcends just the locality in which uh, it's occurring. It, it, it's uh, pertinent to the rest of the nation. And what's going on here in New York State, uh, I think you're all going to want to hear about. And this, this story, just when I first heard about this, it just, I, 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 I blew my mind. But you know what? I'm a shock. Nothing shocks me anymore. But uh, our friend Governor Pataki, who's been on this show, is being sued by uh, convicted sex offenders. They want money because he locked them up um, in a in a uh, facility after they finished uh, their time in the uh, in the slammer, as they say. Joining us now to explain all of this is Jim McGuire, Governor Pataki's former chief counsel, judge, and assistant Manhattan DA. Uh, now a uh, practicing attorney. Hey, Jim, good to see you. Nice to be here, Steve. All right, move a little closer and, and tell me, explain this to me. How it, how it, well, first of all, explain what the, the uh, inmates who are apparently running their own asylum uh, are claiming and uh, how Governor Pataki fits into this. They're claiming that an initiative the governor launched in September of 2005, pursuant to which certain convicted sex abuse offenders violent sexual predators under the New York law um, were evaluated by physicians to determine whether they had mental illnesses that presented a danger to the community and whether they were in need of, of, of treatment. And those who were evaluated by two physicians and then were sent from the state prison before they were going to be released, just before they were going to be released, so that they would not present a danger, they would be, remain committed if a third physician agreed with the first two physicians. And they then had a right to ask for a hearing promptly thereafter. And the claim is that their federal due process rights were violated by the governor's initiative and that the governor and other state officials should be personally liable for millions of dollars, including punitive damages. All right, so this, when you say the governor's initiative, is this, this was the law? What the governor did was, for many years, sought passage in the legislature of a bill that would expressly authorize exactly this. And don't tell me Sheldon Silver held it up. Would not allow it for a vote. Yeah. It passed in the Senate yeah. many, many years, sometimes unanimously, and it would never go to a vote. At, at some point in June of 2005, a convicted uh, uh, sex offender was paroled from prison and murdered a woman in the in a in a mall up in White Plains. I remember that. Yeah. And in the aftermath of that, the governor developed this program. When an assemblyman said, "There's no need to pass a statute. The governor has the authority on his own." The administration looked into it. I wasn't there at the time. Carefully evaluated and determined that under the existing provisions of the mental hygiene law, which allow anybody who is has a serious psychiatric illness who's a danger to himself or others and in need of psychiatric care 
to be confined in a civil institution under the same circumstances with two physicians examining them and then a third, and a third right and with a, with a right to a hearing thereafter. yeah yeah and so that that that's what these men uh, how many convicts are we talking about here well there were there are six who are suing who, six who are suing whose re records needless to say are absolutely dreadful and are they still in in the uh, facility or are they no, out? no they're, they're out they're, they're out now. okay so so they're out they're they're convicted sex offenders they were uh, put into the uh, this facility uh, 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 right before the end of their term and exactly. they remained there. I mean, we're in 13 now. This was in 05 at some point, so that they, they remained there for a number of years. A couple, a couple years, couple of years. Okay. And, uh, and they've decided to sue the state and the governor personally or just the governor personally? The state and the governor the, and many other executive branch officials who were involved in the implementation of the program. And where are we in this, in this case? The trial is going on right now in uh, federal court in Manhattan. And and when what's so so what 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 could what are the possible outcomes here? Either I mean the suit obviously was not thrown out by the judge uh, before the trial. No, uh, the, the judge who I, I have to say is an eminent uh, jurist, Judge uh, Rakoff, concluded that the plaintiffs did state a claim, a due process uh, a claim, uh, did not rule on the merits of it, but also ruled that the governor was not entitled to qualified immunity. Under the federal constitution, executive branch officials in, in states and municipalities are entitled to some deference, recognizing that they must make difficult decisions sometimes about whether things are constitutional or not. So on, based on that, I'm sorry to interrupt, yeah. why, why did the judge decide the way he did, that, they, that, the, that the governor was not entitled to this immunity? Uh, the the essence of it it's it's complicated right. as I'm sure you can right well, you imagine. can read us like ten preambles right but, <laughs> I, but I think I can cut to the yeah, chase yeah, on it and yeah. tell you that the, the core of the ruling was that these inmates did not have a hearing to determine whether they were uh, had psychological illnesses and were a threat to others before they were sent to the mental institution now of course under the mental hygiene law which the governor used as a model. Persons off the street are put don't in the mental that, institution. Don't have that, okay. Don't have that right. So they before the they right had the evaluation of the three doctors, they were sent to the facility. No, they were they were they were examined oh, okay. by two physicians. Yeah, and then the third, and then a third when they got there. Okay, but there was no sort of judicial hearing. Oh, oh, okay, okay, gotcha. That, that's the the linchpin. And so the, that's and seat. that's why the judge ruled that the the governor is not uh, immune from this. Right. The uh, executive branch officials enjoy what's called qualified immunity. Okay. And so they are protected from personal liability if they take actions, even if they violate constitutional rights, as long as as long as that right was not clearly established under federal law. And needless to say, Governor Pataki agrees with Attorney General Schneiderman and his top lawyers that one, there was no due pro process violation, and in any event, it was not clearly established that the program that the governor initiated was a violation of the constitutional rights. We're talking to Jim McGuire, Governor Pataki's former chief counsel, judge, assistant Manhattan DA, and uh, current attorney here on the Steve Malsberg Show. Uh, was this program uh, continued after uh, Governor Pataki left office by uh, Spitzer and Patterson and now Cuomo, or discontinued? The New York State Court of Appeals eventually, prior to this federal lawsuit, right. a claim was brought by a group of, uh, of these same sex offenders, and the New York Court of Appeals ruled not on a constitutional issue. It ruled that between two statutory mechanisms that the governor chose, the one he did under the mental hygiene law and a provision under the corrections law, the governor should have chosen the correction law one. Okay. And that brought the program to a halt. Which would have modified the program somewhat. It, 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 it would have required modifications yeah. to the program. That The New York State's highest court did not rule that the governor had acted unconstitutionally in any way. It simply said as a matter of state law, the, court, the, the governor went the wrong path. A lower intermediate appellate court here in Manhattan unanimously ruled that the governor had made the right choice. Okay, so, oh, all right, so what, what, what's the worst outcome here? And, and by the way, who's representing these, uh, these convicted sex uh, felons? Uh, is this like an ACLU motivated uh, suit or not? It's not the American Civil Liberties Union, but it's a, it's an or, it's a, okay. a law firm that specializes okay. in bringing claims on behalf of, uh, uh, constitutional claims on behalf so of So worst case scenario here, um, how much could Governor Pataki be held liable for? Millions of dollars, not only 
not only a million dollars for the ostensible deprivation of their liberty interests, and I should add, Steve, that many of these inmates never even asked for the hearing that they were entitled to okay. within three days of, of being confined in the institution. Okay, right. Millions of dollars in liability for each of them, and they are also seeking punitive damages. And what's the likelihood in your view? I mean, I know it's an ongoing case. I like to be optimistic, and I like to believe that the jury will understand that the governor made the, d the correct decision. I think the citizens of this state will know and believe that the governor faced with the, d the prospect of more and more people with an extremely high recidivism rate, including abusing young children, should be evaluated and every reasonable step taken to keep them in if they ha have mental illnesses. Are there other such programs uh, around the country in other states? The, the, the governor's uh, statutory initiative, which right. was blocked in the, in the assembly right. for many years, was modeled on a Kansas statute that the United States Supreme Court upheld, and many other states have followed it. Okay. Now, after the Governor Pataki left office, a Democratic governor was able to persuade the Speaker to do the legislation. Was that Spitzer or Patterson? Yes, Spitzer. Governor Spitzer. I've heard of him. Yes. Yeah, black socks, hats, <laughs> this whole thing. All right, so, 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 so they did pass it? Yes. So subsequently it was passed in a post-Pataki uh, um, um, administration. Yes. So it is the law now? Yes, it is so, the okay. law. Okay. All right. So that, so if it had been around it would have, uh, at that time, if Sheldon Silver, who is the Speaker of the Assembly uh, here in the, the uh, state legislature in New York and has been for, what, about 75 years, <laughs> um, he, he wouldn't bring it up. Um, so, um, so the governor was really faced with a terrible problem yeah. as a result of the intransigence. Yeah, you let of these the people out on the streets or do something. And then an assemblyman says, "You don't need a statute. You have the authority to do it on your own." Governor's office looked into it. Right. His lawyers, the lawyers for the Department of Corrections, the lawyers for the Department of Mental Health, all evaluated and said, "You know what? We think that the assemblyman is right." And so they launched the initiative. And now right. we have a lawsuit. All right. Well, what's the anticipated uh, time, I mean, uh, trial-wise, as far as, uh, you know, uh, we always get predictions when it's a, a trial that we're, we're watching nationally. Uh, it could go three weeks, five weeks, eight weeks, two weeks. What, what, we're in the middle Ex of it. How much longer do you excellent think? Excellent question, but I'm not involved in the day-to-day -day okay. of it. I can't imagine that it would, the trial will take much more than a couple of more weeks. All right. Well, when it, when it happens, we'll either have you back when the verdict comes in, and if they allow the governor to uh, weigh in on this, we'd love to hear from him. It'd be a pleasure to come back, Steve. Thank you. Paul, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Paul. I know Paul McGuire. Jim McGuire. I also worked with a Jim McGuire at WABC back in the 80s. It wasn't you. <laughs> You'll be interested to know. Uh, <laughs> governor Pataki's former chief counsel, thanks for showing up. Appreciate My pleasure. it. All right, folks, we're going to come back. Lots more ahead. And uh, at the bottom of the hour, Howie Mandel. Don't touch him on the Steve Malzberg Show. The Steve Malzberg Show. Hello, my name is Fred Flights, and I'm the managing editor of Lignet. You've probably seen our name preceding some of the stories you've read on Newsmax or heard Lignet referenced on Fox News, C-SPAN, or CNN. Perhaps you've asked yourself, what is Lignet? Lignet is an acronym for the Langley Intelligence Group Network, a private Washington, D.C.-based service that provides global intelligence, in-depth analysis, and detailed forecasting. Lignet's staff and advisors include former CIA officers, national security experts, presidential advisors, and top-level government officials from around the world. I myself held several national security posts for the U.S. government during my 25-year career with the Central Intelligence Agency, the Defense Intelligence Agency, the U.S. Department of State, and the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. Our lead advisor is General Michael Hayden, the former director of the CIA. He is joined by former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations John Bolton and former Chairman of the National Intelligence Council and Special Assistant to President Ronald Reagan for its airmark. Former U.S. Ambassador to Venezuela Otto Reich and former Clandestine Service Officer Frederick Russman, former Chairman of the House Intelligence Committee Peter Hoekstra also join our advisory board staff. Every day our goal is to use our expertise, our resources, and our worldwide staff to take the pulse of the ever-changing political and economic landscape and the threats we face on a daily basis. Whether you are following global events for your portfolio or business, or just interested in the world around you, 
Lignet provides what you need to know to keep up with global events. There are many. Every day, Lignet members receive The Morning Brief, a daily email that provides summaries and links to our daily analysis to keep you up to date on Lignet's assessments. Lignet members receive unrestricted access to Lignet's secure database of global analysis. All of our special reports, previous analyses, and exclusive video interviews with intelligence insiders are available to members 24 hours a day. But you also get top-notch analysis that resembles the President's Daily Brief, the classified intelligence assessment delivered to the President of the United States every morning. Lignet also sends breaking news emails to our membership list. If there is a development of global proportions or a terror alert, our subscribers are always the first to know. I hope you now have a better understanding of what Lignet is, but more importantly, recognize how truly invaluable Lignet can be. As the old saying goes, knowledge is power. Join Lignet for $1. Go to Lignet.com. Health insurance is on everybody's mind right now. You either don't have it or you have it and you think it's too expensive. And you probably feel like you don't have any options. We can help. We are InSphere Insurance Solutions. We offer health insurance plans from major carriers nationwide and likely have a plan that can save you money. Whether you're self-employed, on a COBRA plan that's about to expire, or you simply don't have health insurance where you work and you need it, InSphere Insurance Solutions can help you. Our agents will help you find coverage you can afford. InSphere Insurance Solutions is an authorized agency in all 50 states, including the District of Columbia. Plans may not be available in all states. 800-980-9325. 800-980-9325. Breaking news and breaking hearts. Aww. This is the Steve Malzberg Show. All right, folks, welcome back. Steve Malzberg with you. Okay, let me let me let me tell you a little story. Again, it's a New York story. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but uh, it's about a nanny named Bloomberg. Yes, or a manny. I think we we determined that Mayor Bloomberg, Michael Bloomberg, is a ma a manny because he's a male. Um, first, he came after cigarettes, trans fats, salt, uh, supersized drinks. Uh, he has destroyed the, the, the traffic around Broadway. He would not allow the homeless, homeless shelters, to get food from churches, and 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 I'm sorry, from restaurants and and people who wanted to donate food, because the salt content may have been too high in the food for the homeless, for the hungry. He took out ads in the subway uh, with city money, some city money, um, saying, uh, touting the dangers of soup because it had salt in it. Okay, this man, I think he has a Napoleonic complex, and I think because he has $25 billion, he's like, I want it, I want it. And he'll just force it upon all of us. Manny Bloomberg. Well, you know what Manny Bloomberg's after now? Escalators. Escalators. Because you should be walking up the steps. It's healthier. And Mayor Bloomberg says so. And that's the way it should be. I wish, I, oh, if only I could make this up. If I could make this up, I'd, I'd write great books. Um, city officials announcing a new initiative aimed at encouraging office workers to take the stairs instead of waiting for the elevator. Uh, under legislation proposed by the mayor, all new buildings and buildings undergoing major renovation will be required to give occupants access to at least one stairwell, as well as post signs near elevators pointing to nearby stairs. And, of course, escalators don't really fit into that plan of stairs. This is 
insanity. There comes a point, there comes a point where he becomes a parody of himself, and he doesn't care. He had the rules changed so he could run for mayor a third time after he swore he wouldn't, and now that term's coming to an end, and he fancies himself some kind of uh, lawmaker or power broker where he, he takes ads out around the country, you know, against this candidate or that candidate because they aren't against guns. The, the, the verdict comes in in the Trayvon Martin case, and he puts out a statement, bingo, guns, guns, guns. And there was another event, one of the shootings, I think the Batman movie shooting, if I'm not mistaken. That, that morning, it was a Friday morning that we learned about it. It happened, you know, Friday overnight, Thursday overnight into Friday. That morning, he does his radio show on my old station, WOR, and he starts exploiting the whole situation. Not even waiting 24 hours to find out what happened. And Mayor Bloomberg is the guy. When there was a van found filled with explosives in Times Square four years ago, maybe. You remember that? It didn't go off because the guy didn't know how to you know, put the wires together correctly. At a time, at a point in time, where he had to know that they were looking for a, pa uh, for a, a, a man of Middle East origin. I think it was Pakistani, if I'm not mistaken. And that's who eventually it was. If Again, I think Pakistani, uh, it could be mistaken. He went on with Katie Couric on the CBS Evening News that night. And at a time when I had already been reporting that according to the police, they were looking for a, a, a Middle Eastern man that they had records to, to, to link it to. He, was, he went on Katie Couric and said, ah, it could be someone who's not happy with the president's health care bill, you know, meaning a tea partier when he had to have known better and known differently. Mayor Bloomberg, in my opinion, and I, I supported him when he ran the first time, okay? Mayor Bloomberg, in my opinion, is a power-hungry, Napoleonic complex sufferer, billionaire, who, because he's a billionaire, gets away with it and will always get away with it. But you know the good thing? The good thing is he'll be out of everybody's life come November or come January of next year. And he won't be mayor anymore. And he's done some good things for this city. But he'll be gone. And then he could go police his own house and his own friends and his own family and leave everyone else the heck alone. Otherwise, he's a fun guy. <laughs> All right, folks. Howie Mandel. I talked to him yesterday. So my clothes are going to be a little different. Um, but he wouldn't let me touch him. He wouldn't let me come near him. He sat in the other studio on the Steve Malzberg Show. The Steve Malzberg Show. If you are successful at what you do, whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, a business owner, or you have a great career, you understand the concept of protecting yourself. Well, are you protecting yourself, your family, and your assets with quality term life insurance? Consider these possible rates. A man age 45, non-tobacco user, could obtain $1 million of coverage for as little as $75 a month. And this rate is fixed for the next 10 years. We specialize in policy of $500,000 and above. A man age 50, non-tobacco user, may be able to obtain $500,000 of coverage for as little as $115 a month. And this rate is fixed for the next 20 years. We have great rates for smokers too. Call the Term Lifeline now. 800-430-1309. 800-430-1309. 800-430-1309. Meet Jim. Like many of us, Jim enjoys a busy life between work, family, and friends. His days zip along, and Jim has the energy to tackle almost anything. But lately, Jim's get up and go has literally taken on a new meaning. Jim's always put focus on a full night's sleep, but it seems like these days, he's up and down to go to the bathroom so many times he can barely wake up in the morning. His prostate concerns have him sad, tired, and worried. Activities that were once enjoyable now seem like a chore for Jim. His golf game is at the mercy of his bathroom schedule. Family outings are planned around it too. Jim even has difficulty going to the bathroom. He's tried so many prostate remedies he can't keep them straight. And nothing ever seems to help. Then Jim found out about Prostate Revive. 
the all-natural dietary supplement specifically formulated for men, targeted towards improving and sustaining normal prostate function. Prostate Revive includes 15 super ingredients never combined before, including salt palmetto extract, beta cytosterol, pomegranate fruit extract, selenium, and other high-quality nutrients. These targeted and all-natural ingredients promote healthy urinary flow and optimal prostate health. And the best part is, Prostate Revive was developed by a renowned medical doctor. Dr. David Brownstein personally formulated Prostate Revive with one goal in mind, to promote a healthy prostate gland. Thanks to Prostate Revive, Jim's got his life back. He gets a full night's sleep every night, and his friends and his wife can't believe he's the same guy. He has his old energy back, and no one has to wait for him. He doesn't even think about his prostate concerns anymore. Visit MedicSelect.com to take back your nights and improve your quality of life with Prostate Revive. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-625-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. So cancel the cable and get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-625-MY-TV. Right now to sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just $19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-625-MY-TV 1-855-625-MY-TV cancel the cable cut costs and get more 1-855-625-MY-TV 1-855-625-MY-TV Where can you find the Steve Malzberg Show? Everywhere. From your smartphone to satellite radio. To Newsmax Live TV. To Roku. We have you covered. Here is Steve Malzberg. Would you risk your relationship? Throw the whole basket of chips. <laughs> your friendship. Brush your teeth at the table, rinse and spit. Oh! Your self-respect. I peed on myself, okay? Put your hands back on It's good, huh? For a pocket full of cash? You guys have been on a game show called Deal With It. I just won $5,000. Howie Mandel thinks so. A brand new hidden camera ambush series from the comedic mind of Howie Mandel. Deal With It premieres Wednesday, July 17th, only on TBS. Very funny. All right, folks, uh, and that would be today uh, when you're seeing this, Wednesday, July 17th, and this show will debut. It's called Deal With It, and uh, joining us right now is the executive producer, the brainchild, if you will, Howie Mandel, and the host of the show is uh, here as well, and uh, that is Theo Vaughn. Hello, guys. How are you? Uh, good. I should mention that it's 1030 tonight on TBS, 930 Central. Still on TBS. Yes. You, and you just did. I just want you to know, I know. I don't know if you can see me right now, Howie, but I, I do have a hand sanitizer in my right hand and a wipe <laughs> in my left. So uh, everything here has been sanitized. You have, need have no fear about the, uh, the germs from this interview. I have no fear. Okay. The <laughs> truth is that I'm actually right in the next room. I'm just so germaphobe, I didn't want to come in and talk I didn't to want to tell anybody that. Yeah, I, I actually asked you before we started, where are you, where are you guys? It makes this seem so much more big time. <laughs> We're just in the next room, in a closet. In a closet, a absolutely. Absolutely. All right, Fred, let me ask you some questions about this because, and, and, and Theo, welcome to you. So I don't have anything for you, no hand sanitizer, nothing. That's all right, I'm dirty. Okay, good. I like to hear that. And I, first of all, I've always wondered if these shows, you know, where they, they do the hidden cameras, like there's a show on another network now that, where they a bunch of guys, they pull stunts, and I'm thinking, how do restaurants or dentist office or, or any of these places where they do these stunts to patients or, 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 or you know, or, or patrons of a restaurant, how do they allow these people in and are they legally culpable? So my question to you, though, is for this new show, deal with it. How do you get to people? Like, if two people sit down at a restaurant, how, how do you get to one okay, to pull a stunt explain. on another? Well, here's number one. Number one, the restaurant lets us in because when you watch the show tonight at 1030 on TBS, 930 Central, you will see that we, uh, and it's part of our agreement, that we shoot the uh, exterior so they get some kind of uh, publicity. So they're more than happy to do that. And we also assure them that 
ultimately at the end the patron will be thrilled that they showed up in your establishment so because even if they're angry in the middle even if it's awkward ultimately when they find out it was just a game and they possibly won a lot of money they're going to be happy and they could only have done that in your restaurant or your bar so now we just set up cameras in the restaurant and bar as per their permission. We watch all their patrons come in. Like the NSA. Yeah, we can hear you, we can <laughs> see you, and we'll go, oh, look at that couple. It's a, it's a mother and a daughter. And then we'll say, uh, Theo will yeah. say, like, let's bring the mother back. So we send over a waiter who's wearing an earpiece who can hear us, and he'll walk over and say, listen, have you been here before? Yes. Do you want to fill out a little form and maybe we'll give you a free lunch, a little questionnaire? And she says, sure. And he'll say, come back. And then she walks back, and then lo and behold, it's us sitting in the back. And Theo yes. will say to her, I'll be, I'm standing in the back. Do you want to be on a game show? Do you want to win money right now? She says, yes. I put an earpiece in her ear. Now she's back out in a game show. Within a minute, yes. you know, and tells her daughter she filled out a little uh, questionnaire and they're going to get a free lunch. Her daughter has no idea. And then we say, you can't, you will lose. You will not win any money if she thinks that you're on a game show, if she thinks it's TV, or anybody in the restaurant does. And then we give her challenges. We'll say to her, you know what, tell your daughter for $500, tell your daughter that uh, you're pregnant and it's not her father's. For five hundred dollars, <laughs> deal with it. And then he she has the earpiece. The All right, well that explains it because you know, sitting home, I the savvy viewer like me always wondered how the heck did they pull this stuff off. Well, you, you've now explained it. Um, and why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, Theo? I would have Howie do it, but uh, you'll probably build yourself up more than Howie would build you up. Yeah, I'll toot my own horn. Um, I started off in Road Rules, which is a reality television show, uh, and then I got into uh, Last Comic Standing, a uh, half hour special on Comedy Central. So, some of the same veins of reality television and comedy. I've um, always been a big fan of Howie. When they asked me to be on board, you know, um, I mean, when Howie says jump, you say Howie High. That's how I say it. <laughs> Howie High. Okay, I, I know some people who went to Howie High, <laughs> but um, bum. Uh, let, let me ask you, uh, Howie. Yeah. Um, you came up with this idea, and of course, you, you've no, had No, I didn't. I didn't. This this is a huge hit all over Europe. So my production company, I produce, uh, you know, approached its Keshet, the same people that uh, uh, Homeland. respond Homeland, yeah, uh, who do it. They're out of Israel. I said, can I bring this to America? And they allowed my company to produce this for America. All right. Well, fair enough. But you, but you are the executive producer. So the yep. shows that that you did that you've dealt with recently, America's Got Talent, Deal or No Deal. And by the way, Deal with it. I think you should have put maybe uh, a, a Deal with Talent, so you would have had a little of both in there. But anyway, nonetheless, uh, the show is called Deal with It. Um, is this a diversion? Are these shows so successful? And and you hope that this show will be so successful because of it, it, people need a diversion from everything that's going on. Why why do they watch these kinds of shows? Do you think? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> and that's not you know, a good I'm, answer, by the way. For me, I just I make shows and and I'm involved in shows that I really like, and I don't think about why people will watch them. I really think about what makes me laugh. What is the kind of television that I want to sit down and watch? What I like about Deal with It is, and uh, you know, I think America's Got Talent has this, and 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 Deal or No Deal had it. It's very visceral, where you can sit down with the whole family and you go, Oh my God, she's yeah. not going to say that. She's not going to say. It. And if she says that, you go, Oh, and you're you're out loud and you're screaming, and the kids are there. You can also relate. How would I react? Yeah, would I, I wouldn't it? believe that she really is going to do that. You tell the mom to get up. There's a an older couple eating chocolate cake at the next table. Go and put your face in the chocolate cake. You go, oh, my, what are the people going to do? What are they? So I like that kind of involving, edgier seat, visceral kind of television that kind of, I think television in itself is a diversion and, you know, gets you away from just your everyday life and news and whatever. We're just looking to make people laugh, give people money, and hopefully ultimately entertain. And that's what Deal With It does. And we're talking to uh, Harry Mandel and uh, the executive Harry. producer yeah. and, uh, the, uh, and Theo Vaughn, the oh, host. Harry. Of, are you guys like talking to each other while I'm talking? <laughs> We're listening in just a little bit. So oh, okay. Yeah. Time, well, you're, so you're, like you're spying, now you're spying on me to see if I'm <laughs> guest worthy, I guess. Yes. Um, anyway, and by the way, I'll put my face in chocolate cake for $500. No problem. Just do it. Or I'll put someone else's face in it, too. Um, anyway, so, okay, so this is uh, tonight, 1030 Eastern, 930 Central on TBS. Um, when, when, you, when you go into a show like this, uh, talk about the most, uh, give us a hint of what you, I mean, you did, uh, you know, say it's not my, it's, you, I have another baby, it's not my, your father, blah, 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 but what can we look for? Give us, give us a little hint of tonight, maybe something that we could, uh, we could look for. On tonight's show? Uh, tonight's show, tonight. we had two Italian gentlemen 
But that wasn't in a restaurant. That was a spa bar or a lobby a, bar. Yeah, a lobby bar of a hotel, of yeah. a spa. And we had two Italian gentlemen who came in. And um, just watching their interaction with even... Well, we had one guy, he, he had a... He had him pulling his leg across no, the I told him I told him to pretend he his foot's asleep. and yes. I wanted to get him to do something physical all over this public place. So get up and start <laughs> jumping around like your foot's asleep. And then when his friend goes to help, ask for your friend for help. Make it as tough on your friend as possible. So sit down on the floor. Then say the only way it's going to feel better is you've got to get him to pull your leg and drag you all the way across <laughs> the floor to the bar in a public restaurant. Will he do it? Could he do it? What would that look like if he does it? I'm not going to tell you the reason. No, but no, it yeah. is crazy. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Now, let, and let then me... thank your friend, thank your buddy. Yes. By a long, uh, luxurious kiss on the lips. Can you hold it for ten okay, seconds? Now you, now you got me. Now I don't know if I would do that for five hundred. It might take a heck of a lot more to do no, that. No, that one, that one. He, I'm telling That's you, the challenges money. tonight go all the way to five thousand. Oh, okay. Well, then now you might be talking. All right. Uh, just <laughs> let me ask you: Are you guys, are you guys in L.A. right now? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, have you come into contact with any of the protests or anything going on over the shooting, uh, the verdict? I haven't seen any of that. Uh, no, there is. Uh, there is. Yes, I've seen it. I've seen it, and uh, it's terrible. And I hope that people's minds they just stay calm and keep the peace, and you know that'll make their message louder and clearer than getting a little crazy and being somewhat violent. Are you political at all, Howie? Yes. Yes. Which, which yes. way do you lean? Left, right? I lean forward. <laughs> so, well, that's what Obama says. So then I would have to tell. That's what MSNBC says. So then I'd have to assume you lean left. No. Okay. No, I'm not really political. I thought I was gonna. I thought it was gonna lead someplace else. I forgot I was on Newsmax. <laughs> You're on XM. You're on News Talk 1160 in Atlanta. You're on a lot of places. Yeah. But uh, anyway, I'm not listen. political. Hopefully, I'm just funny. Yeah, you are. You're very funny. Hey, good Thank luck you. to both of you, and uh, we'll be watching tonight. Thanks, Steve. All right. Take care. Bye, Theo. Bye-bye. All right. There you go. They're in the next room, actually, folks. They're not in Los Angeles. Howie would not come in here because of the germs. He's a germaphobe, as you well know. That's why I have the, uh, the this. I'm holding up the uh, Citrus 2 antibacterial hand sanitizing lotion, and I got my wipe. And even that wasn't good enough to bring him into this studio. He comes, like, in a bubble, and it's amazing to watch. But it's in the next room. Actually, I'm waving to them right now. Anyway, all right, we're going to continue. Don't forget to watch the show. Deal with it on uh, TBS uh, tonight at 1030 Eastern, uh, 930 Central. Um, you know, it's, it's, it is a fun. Those kinds of shows are funny. So I'm assuming that this one will be top of the line funny. Uh, on the Steve Malzberg Show. The Steve Malzberg Show. Heart disease is the biggest killer disease in America, and this doesn't surprise me. We are addicted to starches, sugars, fatty meats, and salt. People who live in countries with little heart disease eat very differently. One way some people stay heart healthy is by following what is known as the caveman or Stonehenge diet, so named because of its similarity to the way our prehistoric ancestors ate. People who follow this type of diet live off local fruits and root vegetables and get their protein mostly from fish and wild game they shoot themselves. Now since most of us don't hunt or fish for all our protein, here are some simple tips on how you can start to eat like a caveman modern day style. First, fill up on fruits and vegetables. Eat them first and you'll be less hungry. Feast on fish which is rich in nutrients, but not in calories. Choose fatty fish like mackerel, herring, sardines, and salmon, which are rich in heart-healthy omega-3 fatty acids. Get out and go for a walk. Remember, our ancestors were hunters and gatherers, so they didn't spend their time sitting in front of a TV or computer all day. If you live more like a caveman or a cavewoman, your heart will love you for it. I'm Dr. Chauncey Crandall, and thank you for watching this Heart Health Minute. Remember, it's never too late to prevent or reverse heart disease. Right now, I invite you to discover your own risk for heart disease or even a heart attack by taking my quick, free online quiz at www.simpleheartest.com.
According to the FBI Uniform Crime Report, there are over 5,000 robberies every day. Your home could be at risk of being burglarized. Don't put your loved ones and valuables in jeopardy. For just over a dollar per day, your home can be protected from break-ins, fire, and more. Get the latest home security technology from Protect Your Home, your ADT authorized dealer. Over 6 million households sleep better at night with ADT monitored home security. What's more, Protect Your Home is offering you their latest equipment, an $850 value, absolutely free for qualified customers. Protect your loved ones and home today. Call now for licenses and to find out more. The call is free, 1-800-949-8201. That's 1-800-949-8201. Again, 1-800-949-8201. $99 installation charge, 36-month monitoring agreement at $36.99 per month. Payment by credit card or electronic bank account charge. For new homeowner customers with Satisfactory credit history only. Local permit fees may be required. Certain restrictions apply. Cannot be combined with any other offer. We're in the midst of an obesity epidemic, and I'm not surprised. The statistics on obesity mirror an increasing trend of eating out or ordering in. In fact, some people dine out every night, but eating in restaurants is one of the biggest enemies of your heart. When you're in a restaurant, you don't really know what you're getting. And the calorie counts of many restaurant dishes are astronomical. In fact, some single dishes contain more calories than we should eat in an entire day. Eating in fast food restaurants is even worse. A diet of hamburgers, french fries, and shakes constitutes a fast lane to the emergency room. If you really want to help your heart, Get in the habit of cooking simple meals at home. Here are three easy tips that will make your food taste better than even the best restaurant. Choose the best fruit in season. Your local farmer's market is a great place to start. It will probably still cost less than that pie you were thinking of buying. Get in the habit of using fresh herbs. You can use them in egg white omelets or dust them on the fish you grill or bake. And for a light dessert, choose a square or two of dark chocolate that, that you and your spouse can enjoy. There are lots of ways to make your heart healthy, but there are also lots of ways to damage it. That's why I wrote Fix It, Dr. Crandall's 90-day program. In it, I'll tell you how to kickstart your metabolism every day, how to pick the best diet for you, how to stop hunger from sabotaging your diet, the seven superfoods for your heart. I'm Dr. Chauncey Crandall, and thanks for watching this Heart Health Minute. Microphones hot. Satellite link established. Studio lights illuminated. Cameras rolling. Audio and video encoders firing ones and zeros. Internet stream. Um, is streaming. The most technology advanced radio show is on the air. Here's the captain of this enterprise, Steve Malsberg. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I, I have an idea. Um, I think this topic kind of dovetails into um, Howie Mandel. By the way, did I say Harry Mandel at one point? Anyway, um, sorry about that. But uh, and I was kidding. He he was he was really in L.A. He was not really here. Um, so, but he is a germaphobe, from what I hear. Um, anyway, there's this story, and Rush Rush led his show with this today, and that's how I became aware of it. And I very only when I'm running a little late do I ever get to hear Rush anymore. Um, used to have it so that I, I one of my previous gig, I got in about an hour later, and I heard the first hour of Rush every day, and it's always good to hear what he's talking about. But um, today I heard the first like 10, 15 minutes or 20 minutes because I was running late. Anyway, long story short. There's a, a piece in the New York Times by Kate Taylor, who we are going to have on this show because I have the best producers in the world, and they'll get me anybody I want. Uh, so Kate Taylor is going to be on this show. She wrote a piece about um, hooking up, hooking up on campus. It's, th apparently, there's no more really dating or romancing or, you know, or going out on, on – and I wouldn't just say no more. I'm sure it happens. As a matter of fact, I – I have a neighbor who has a daughter. She's engaged. You know, well, she's not engaged, but she's been seeing this guy she met in college for a number of years now. So it happens, but it doesn't happen all that much. Look, our society is really falling apart. 
it's really falling apart, culminating with the uh, DOMA decision and the destruction of Prop 8, and uh, in my opinion. But, but it, it's not just that. You know, the, the, it, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be what results after that, a, a, as a result of that, and what, what has preceded it. And look, women, we've had this discussion with feminists on both sides of this issue, gender feminists and, 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 uh, and the other kind of feminists, and, and women are taught, basically, you know, you're not going to get married, and if you're going to get married, you're not going to get married young, and you're not going to have kids, and if you have kids, you don't need a father, and if you do have kids and you do get married, you don't have to, you don't have to stay home with them. You know, we are completely, we have evolved for better or for worse, I'll leave you to decide that. Dare, I dare not have an opinion. Uh, we have evolved in such a short amount of time, basically in a generation. From my growing up with my parents to the next generation, to this generation, which uh, I, I, maybe there's been a, you know, it depends on what age the, ch the kids are, but... I mean, I got married relatively late and had a child when I was 40. But, you know, if I had had him a little earlier, so there were kids who were born, you know, late. But my point is, how many kids live with two parents? How many kids live with a mother who stays home and is there when they go to school, takes them to school, picks them up from school, cooks them dinner, is there at dinner, helps them with the homework, is there for moral support, is just there in the house as a fixture? How many kids? Everything's different. And now, going forward, this new generation of kids who have been raised in these kinds of households, who have been taught, especially the girls, and you'll see why I say that in a second, who have been taught, you don't, marriage, what are you, crazy? You go out there and you get a career. You don't need, and you don't need a man, you know? So now we got this whole thing. Uh, the New York Times, and, and there's a, there's a, Great piece on uh, Town Hall, townhall.com, ripping this piece by Courtney O'Brien. That's who wrote the Town Hall piece. Um, but basically, it starts off uh, uh, on a, at 11 on a weeknight earlier this year. Her work finished. A slim, pretty junior at the University of Pennsylvania did what she often does when she has little free time. She texted her regular hookup, the guy she's sleeping with but not dating. No, sorry, control room. I do not have her text uh, information or her number or her picture or anything. Um, she texted her. Okay, uh, what, what's he up to? The t he texted back, come over. So she did. They watched a little TV, had sex, went to sleep. Uh, their relationship, she noted, is not about the meeting of two souls. Quote, we don't really like each other in person. Sober, she added, uh, saying we literally can't sit down and have coffee. Ask, well, ask her why she hadn't, uh, hasn't had a relationship at Penn and she won't complain about the death of courtship or men who won't commit. Instead, she'll talk about cost-benefit. Cost-benefit. Like the feminists have been pounding her, pounding her brain and her brain and her head and her head. Cost-benefit. Um, what does that mean? Uh, it's a cost-benefit analysis and the, quote, low risk and low investment costs of hookups. I positioned myself in college in such a way that I can have a meaningful romantic relationship because I'm always busy and the people that I'm interested in are always busy. And I know everyone says, make time, make time, said the woman who spoke on the condition of anonymity. By the way, have you ever seen the condition of anonymity? What is the condition of anonymity? How is anonymity doing? Um, I've always wondered that. But there are so many other things, she says, going on in my life that I find so important that I just, like, can't make time and I don't want to make time. It is by now pretty well understood, it says here, that traditional dating in college has mostly gone the way of the landline, replaced by hooking up, an ambiguous term that can signify anything from making out to, I'll say what Rush said today, a Lewinsky, uh, to intercourse without the emotional entanglement of a relationship. I, it's just, it's just very symptomatic of where we are. It's very symptomatic of where we are. And is it better this way? Is it better that this girl, and, and I'll compare it to, to the, the, the girl who lives in my, uh, in my neighborhood, my, my, my friend's daughter, who went to uh, 
University of Delaware, met a guy. She's been seeing him for a number of years. She brings him home, you know, when they go on vacation. I saw him the other day. I said, so when are you getting married? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they walked away. But the point, the point is, that's the way it should be. Well, who are you to say how it should be? I know. I know. I'm a, let's see. What kind of bigot am I for saying that girls in college should, you know, want to date a guy and not just sleep with him? What kind, what kind of bigot am I? What kind of letter are you going to throw at me now? What am I? I can't be homophobic for that. I can't be racist for that. What, what, what am I? Think of something, okay, and text me. By the way, you could follow me. This is like a parenthesis, a huge parenthesis in my conversation here and my train of thought um, as I digress. I, I never give this out. Follow me on Twitter, at Steve M. Talk. I get all choked up when I give my Twitter handle. At Steve M. Talk. Very easy. Whether you're listening on XM, watching at Newsmax, listening on, in Atlanta on, on, on the talk of the, of the town, News Talk 1160, at Steve M. Talk. Or like my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Steve M. Talk. All right? So that's the best way you could follow me. Um, anyway, now p- close parenthesis and we get back to this. This is what girls are being taught. This is what girls are learning today. Okay? And it's just, a, it's just a natural flow of what they, the previous generation, the, the radical feminists have been teaching girls in college. At least in this case, they're not telling them, you know, don't go near a boy. You know, boy, men are horrible. Although I'm sure that's still out there, very prevalent. But these girls who are just hooking up, they're having sex. Is that what you want your daughter to do at college? When you send your, your high school senior graduated daughter to college, don't you hope she meets a guy? Don't you hope she meets someone nice, maybe? And, and, and if not the one, at least somebody that she could date and have a relationship with and, you know, what? Or you say, or you say no, hey, you know, hey, Jane, just go there and j- j- sleep with as many guys as you can. Have as much sex as you want. No attachment, move on to the next guy. There's something fundamentally sick about that. That's not, that's not the society I grew up in. It's not the world I want my son to participate in. And it's, a, a, it's just another symptom of a world where men are diminished. The value of a man in your life as a woman is, 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 is you're told, is meaningless. You don't need him. Fend for yourself, earn enough money so you don't need a man, you don't even need a father for your kid, get a sperm donor, blah, 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 raise him alone, get a babysitter, get a nanny, go to work, see him at dinner sometimes. We're falling apart. We're falling apart at the seams. Uh, When we come back, the Rolling Stone magazine cover, Steve Malzberg Show. The Steve Malzberg Show. Hi, this is Mike Reagan. Folks ask me, what would Ronald Reagan do if he were with us today? I believe the first thing he'd do is stop Obamacare. Already it's in effect with higher taxes, hidden fees, skyrocketing insurance rates, big Medicare cuts, and some insurance plans are hit with a 40% tax. Protect yourself by getting the Obamacare Survival Guide. It's already a number one New York Times bestseller. Newsmax says it's the best guide to the new law, giving you the strategies, tips, and loopholes you need to know. If you're insured on Medicare, a business owner, a medical professional, just about anyone, you need this book. Get the number one bestseller, The Obamacare Survival Guide, at bookstores everywhere. Or get our special $4.95 offer and save $15 off the cover price by going now to Obamacare911.com. Obamacare911.com. That's Obamacare911.com. Here's today's silver shortage update from Lear Capital. Reports keep coming. The shortage is growing. Twice already this year, the U.S. Mint has run out. Last time this happened, the silver price jumped 40%. It's time to take advantage with this special offer from Lear Capital. For a limited time, buy 20 new silver polar bear coins and get one free. 
the only 1.5 ounce coin on the market. It's minted with the finest silver, carries a government guarantee, and is eligible for IRAs. The Silver Polar Bear is available exclusively from Lear Capital. But don't wait. Silver supplies are shrinking and availability is not guaranteed. This offer is limited to a minimum purchase of $5,000. Call right now. 800 6340 800-634-0482. Call Lear Capital now. 800-634-0482. Hello and welcome to your Newsmax Now update. I'm John Bachman. A big deal just reached in the Senate late last night clears the way for a couple of President Obama's nominees to key administration posts. That includes Richard Cordry, who was confirmed today he will now head the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. The deal also means that Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid will avoid using the so-called nuclear option, which changes filibuster rules, to get those appointments in place. Also in Congress, House Republicans are trying to capitalize on a couple of recent setbacks with President Obama's signature health care legislation as they vote to strip the law's requirements to purchase insurance. What you're seeing now is our individuals and groups from different camps from both sides of the political aisle saying, wait a minute, this thing is going to be a nightmare. The move comes after union leaders who initially supported the law sent a letter to the White House expressing concerns that the law creates an incentive for employers to keep employees' work hours below 30 hours a week. The White House's announcement also that it was pushing the law's employer mandate back a year because businesses complained it was too complex. The White House says the law's problems are being overblown, and Democrats argue bumps in the road should be expected with a plan of this size. And authorities in Panama sees a North Korean cargo ship, and inside, buried under tons of brown sugar, they find old missile parts and equipment, all of it undeclared which means this may have been a violation of U.N. sanctions. The ship was being tracked by U.S. intelligence since it left Cuba, and get this, before the seizure, there was a brief standoff during which the ship's captain tried to slit his own throat. Well, it remains to be seen if U.S. Attorney General will bring federal civil rights charges against George Zimmerman, but Holder was more clear about his own feelings on these so-called stand-your-ground laws. While speaking at the NAACP convention in Orlando, Holder said the issue is a personal one to him because he has a teenage son and worries about his safety. These laws try to fix something that was never broken by allowing and perhaps encouraging violent situations to escalate in public. Also, the Reverend Al Sharpton is calling for a national day of protest. His civil rights group is planning rallies and vigils in 100 cities on Saturday in support of federal civil rights charges against George Zimmerman. And 83 survivors from Asiana Flight 214, the one that crashed in San Francisco, say they plan to sue Boeing, the plane's manufacturer. The multi-million dollar lawsuit is focusing on mechanical problems with the engine controls, emergency slides, and seat belts. The next up on our Newsmax Now update, Fed Chair Ben Bernanke before Congress, his comments on the economy and what they may mean for investors. Plus, Senator Mike Lee on this week's rules debate in the Senate, why he says it was all just a Democratic distraction. Next. In 2013, half of your friends, family, and neighbors may lose their jobs, all while you are robbed of 90% of your life savings, investments, and home's value. Controversial economist Robert Wiedemer, who was the only expert to predict the recession, has released a startling video with shocking evidence that the powers that be have tried to ban. But that hasn't stopped 50 million people from getting the truth. Watch it at Aftershock911.com. Aftershock911.com. What is Lignet? Lignet is knowledge. Lignet is power. Lignet is global. Top-level officials, U.S. intelligence officers, national security advisors, foreign operatives, all reporting directly to you. What is Lignet? Lignet is confidential. Lignet is sensitive. Lignet is security. What is Lignet? They're the ones taking the world's pulse. If you're not in the know, you're not on Lignet.com. You've been briefed.
Tired of calls, levies, and liens from the IRS or hiring others who don't get the job done? Call Wall & Associates and you'll never talk to the IRS again. The IRS has a program to eliminate tax debt and Wall & Associates professionals are trained to maximize its benefits for you. You always speak with a live person with real support and real knowledge. We've helped thousands of taxpayers like you settle their tax debt with the IRS for a fraction of what they owe. We solve tax problems. Call Wall & Associates now. 800-574-6029. We have the professionals who know how to solve tax problems. If you owe money to the IRS, your tax problems are not going away by themselves, and the passage of time will only make matters worse. Act now before it's too late. Call Wall & Associates right now to speak to a professional tax relief agent. Call 800-574-6029. That's 800-574-6029. Again, 800-574-6029. And welcome back. During highly anticipated testimony before Congress today, Fed Chair Ben Bernanke says the bank's stimulus measures will continue with employment relatively high and inflation relatively under control. But Bernanke added that things could change quickly if the economic picture changes as well. Wall Street gave a lukewarm reception to the announcement. And the debate about Senate rules may seem trivial to people outside of Washington. And during a Newsmax exclusive with Senator Mike Lee, he says that's exactly how it looks from his perspective inside Washington as well. It was wrong for us to even be having this discussion because it's a distraction, first of all. There's really no substance behind what he was complaining about. This has been your Newsmax Now update. I'm John Bachman. Now here's the Steve Malzberg Show in New York. Are you ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studios, this is the Steve Malzberg Show. Be a part of the action by calling 855-777-9660. That's 855-777-9660. Or email Steve at malzbergshow at newsmax.com. Here is Steve Malzberg. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are back. Welcome to hour number three of the uh, Wednesday edition of the Steve Malzberg Show. Uh, coming up at the bottom of the hour, uh, Dr. Daniel Pipes will join us, founder and director of the, the Middle East Forum. And we're going to talk about a whole bunch of things uh, with him. But uh, before that, uh, Bruce Springsteen, uh, noted leftist. Uh, and let, 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 me, let me give you a confession here. Uh, I uh, was a huge Springsteen fan. I went to, I must have been to, I don't know, 25 Bruce Springsteen concerts. I think I went to the first Bruce Springsteen, I know for sure, 1980. 1980, the River album. Uh, Madison Square Garden had pretty darn good seats too. I went to see uh, Bruce Springsteen and um, played four hours. It was Thanksgiving week. Thanksgiving week. Check it out. Check, go Google it. I was there. Anyway, um, and, and, and it was a friend of mine I was on a picket line with back then. There were three of us, four of us. Uh, don't ask. It's a long story. And he got me into Springsteen. But um, then there came a time when uh, a, a shooting took place in New York, and it was uh, called the, uh, it was, uh, the shooting uh, death of Amadou Diallo. Amadou Diallo was killed by New York City police, undercover police, in the vestibule of his, of his uh, apartment building. 41 shots were fired by police officers that night. 41 shots. I don't remember how many hit Amadou Diallo. But immediately, of course, because Amadou Diallo was um, a minority, I think most of the cops were white. I, I can't attest to the fact. I don't think all of them were. Racist cops, racist cops. Why would anybody have to shoot 41 times, etc., etc., etc.? Well... Bruce Springsteen wrote a song for Amadou Diallo called American Skin. American Skin. Basically, if you're black in America, it's open season. Uh, I guess in, in this case, referencing the cops. Let's listen to, uh, to some of that, that song, American Skin, Bruce Springsteen. And I forgot what card, what told, what, oh, this is 14. And we'll take that ride Cross 
this bloody river to the other side. Forty-one shots cut through the night. You're kneeling over his body in the vestibule, praying for his life. Is it a gun? Is it a knife? Is it a wallet? This is your life. It ain't no secret. It ain't no secret. No secret, my friend. You can get killed just for living in your American skin. All right, Bruce Springsteen uh, sang that again last night, apparently. Not that, that's from a while ago. And dedicated it to Trayvon Martin. Uh, back when Bruce Springsteen wrote this song, uh, before the cops were tried and acquitted by a jury with a black foreman, a, a trial that was on television. And the reason he said, is it a gun, is it a knife, is it a wallet? First of all, I'll just give you a quick synopsis. Uh, the the uh, the defense proved they didn't have to prove anything, but the defense proved that uh, Amadou Diallo uh, disobeyed orders. He didn't speak English that well. They told him to put his hands up. He reached into his pocket. He pulled out something. One of them shouted "gun," and then all hell broke loose. Okay, turns out, and I had no idea, but I saw this at the trial, and you could Google the trial and read the testimony. There is something called a wallet gun. The the defense attorney for the officers held up a wallet in one hand and a so-called wallet gun in the other and said, can you tell which I have in which hand? Which, which, which hand has the gun? Which hand has the wallet? They couldn't, I couldn't tell. They couldn't tell. They acquitted the cops. And Bruce Springsteen, I had tickets for him. This is going back to 2000 and I don't know, two, three, whenever the trial was, maybe earlier. And I had tickets for him that night on a particular night at Madison Square Garden, floor seats, and when I found out from my friends at the PBA, the New York PBA, that Springsteen would not take their call, Springsteen's representative would not talk to the head of the PBA, Pat Lynch, so he could explain the cop side of the story and not sing 41 shots before that trial of those officers, I auctioned my tickets off on the air and gave the proceeds to the uh, 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 Patrolman Benevolence Association Widows and Orphans Fund. I got a couple of grand for him. And ever since then, I see Bruce Springsteen in a different light. Okay, just thought I'd, I'd say that. All right, now we are joined as we switch topics, kind of. Uh, we, we speak to uh, Eric Deggins, TV and media critic for the Tampa Bay Times and author of Race Bader, How the Media Wields Dangerous Words to Divide a Nation. Hello, Eric. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. Um, okay, let's start since we're gonna, I wanted to get both in, and since we started with a little Trayvon Martin news here that Bruce Springsteen dedicated a song to him that he had written for Amadou Diallo. Um, before we get to the Rolling Stone magazine, uh, horrific, in my view, horrific uh, cover of the uh, Boston Bomber, uh, what's your take on the, uh, on the verdict and, and the aftermath? Um, I think part of what we're seeing is that there's a lot of emotion surrounding this verdict. And so um, people who wanted him to be convicted, obviously, are angry and frustrated. Um, people who, uh, you know, uh, were skeptical of the charges feel vindicated. And I think we're seeing a lot of people saying a lot of things about this verdict that may not necessarily uh, be true. Um, because the jurors aren't really talking a lot uh, about why they came to their verdict, one juror is talking anonymously to CNN and uh, four others have released one statement. Um, it's hard to know what principles they use to come to their decision. So people who are saying this is about um, uh, stand your ground laws or this is about um, um, race, the fact that people can be racially profiled and we don't, right. uh, and, 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 the, and, and police and, and the officials don't do anything about it, I think those are both kind of extreme readings of what happened because we don't we haven't had a chance to really talk to the jurors and find out uh, uh, what was what was on their mind well we don't know we don't know what 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 uh, evidence uh, they might have found most compelling not all of them we know what one of the six did uh, but we do know that uh, under the law if they felt that he was 
defending himself and felt that he was in severe uh, threat of death or severe bodily injury uh, and he was being beaten and attacked or whatever, that he had a right to defend himself, and that's what they all voted. So we do know that. Um, we don't know why they voted to acquit. Not why. Well, we, we know. Uh, we well, wait, we no, know that's why, not true. We know, we know that they one, felt he defended we himself. One, we know why one person says that she voted to acquit them. Well, and and yeah. she says, uh, and, she's, and she's also saying that other people voted along those lines, but then they also released a statement saying this woman doesn't speak for us. I understand <laughs> that. No, no, <laughs> so no, 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 no. So, but, we, but, don't, so we don't necessarily know but that. They but voted, they voted. Know, wait, wait. They voted not guilty. We know that. What we do know. Well, but they might have just said that the state didn't prove beyond a reasonable doubt. Uh, that George Zimmerman was guilty of manslaughter or murder. Doesn't matter. They voted a, not which guilty. Is a very, yeah. which, is a, which is a very different thing than saying that he was uh, justified in defending himself. That we don't, we don't know that because we haven't talked to the jurors. But what we do know about this situation is that no one saw how the fight started. And that is the key element in understanding uh, and, and maybe proving one side or another. If, if George Zimmerman was being dishonest about how the fight started, um, then perhaps we do have a situation where he instigated a fight, and when he started to lose it, he killed the person that he was fighting with. Um, or perhaps things happened the way um, Zimmerman said he did, and Trayvon Martin uh, attacked him uh, after he, as he was trying to get back to his, to his car. Uh, and then Trayvon Martin started a fight uh, that then uh, you know, led to his death. But no one saw how the fight started except these two guys. One of them is dead, and another one has a tremendous incentive to tell a story that makes him uh, uh, look, look, look good. So um, that's the central problem with this issue, is that no one can answer the key question. Right, and that's reasonable doubt, uh, and, that's, uh, and that leads uh, the jury uh, to have to find a, a not guilty verdict. How do you feel to about you and me, that's reasonable doubt. We don't know. Uh, because no one has really talked to everyone in the jury to find out if that's why they voted okay. that yeah, way. But, but, but they, the state did not prove its case in their claims uh, beyond a reasonable doubt, or they would have voted guilty. And the state claimed that it was the other way around, that, uh, that, he, that uh, George Zimmerman stalked him and hunted him down and started a fight and attacked him and shot him for when he didn't have to because he wanted to. Uh, and, and that obviously wasn't proven beyond a reasonable doubt, and the jury did not vote for that. They voted not guilty. So that right. much we do certainly know. Now, how do you feel about a, a prosecutor who still calls him a murderer after the fact, a, 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 an attorney general who still, who still after the fact says, I have, I'm troubled by the verdict, um, uh, a, a black leader like Jesse Jackson calling him and saying he's the same as Emmett Till, um, uh, Tavis Smiley saying uh, our, ba our babies are being gunned down at the street, uh, to words to that effect, and right on down the line. What I think happened in this case is that there was all this protest and um, frustration and anger expressed to try and push the system into doing everything it could to try and find out what happened between these two people. Um, I, I fear that if there hadn't been this public uh, attention, and there's probably other cases that might be similar, the police would have just gone to the family and said, look, we're not going to prosecute him. And you just have to deal with that. Well, that's what and, that's what and, ultimately and, should have happened because there was I'm no case. Sure, I'm not sure that's what should have happened. Well, there was no case. What, what happened here? No, it's not. It's not that there was no case. What happened is they got their shot in front of a jury, and the jury decided that it didn't meet the reasonable doubt level. No, no, but, but before that, wait, wait, let me. Make, yeah. But the jury got to make that decision. Right, but 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 instead not every of, case warrants a of, jury instead trial. Of, instead of a prosecutor, instead of a police chief, instead of a police detective, and so all this protest pushed the system to do everything it could to find out what happened between these two people. And what we found out was that the key piece of evidence does not really exist, which is an, ob an objective view of how the fights well then why was the yeah. trial then why was the case ever charged in other words if the key if, wait, wait wait you just said the evidence doesn't exist that's exactly what the original police found the original investigators found the sheriff found everyone found that but it, as you not said everyone, wait let, let me let me let me finish let me finish it well, was it was po it was political pressure that put you're George being, Zimmerman's life at accurate. risk of, of suffering. You're not, you're, not, you're not being accurate. I'm not. Obviously, the prosecutors feel that they proved their case. 
This is a difference of opinion. Now, no, 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 my, no, no. You're missing now my point. My, now, in my in my estimation, I don't think they proved their case, and I don't think they came up with that key piece of evidence. But the reason the prosecutor is still calling him a murderer is because she feels like she did prove her well, case. Well, she could get sued. Jury, yeah. And that the and that the jury. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, disagree. Well, that's not and, common. And, and, pra- and but wait, let can, me finish, Eric. You can, that, have, you can have disagreements here. Eric, but you, you, when you're a prosecutor, it's conduct that's very unprofessional. In fact, uh, I just had Dennis, uh, 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 Mark O'Mara. Uh, so, so wait a minute. Can I finish anything? Sure. I just had Mark O'Mara on a little while ago, and he uh, intimated that a lawsuit uh, against the, uh, the, the viciousness of this prosecutor, the unprofessionalism and the slander uh, of this prosecutor towards uh, towards George Zimmerman in the aftermath of a verdict where he is considered not guilty in the eyes of the law, and she says murderer. I hope she. I hope he sues her, and I hope he wipes her out. How would dare? You, uh, how, you, dare have, how dare? How dare she do this? Would you have just suggested that O.J. Simpson sue Marsha Clark or sue uh, Marsha Clark? Did, if you or, could or show me, the, or if sue you, the members, or sue the members of the of that prosecution team, if you could say fi- that they still felt that he was a murderer, even though they lost. If the case they if them. they did it, fine. I don't believe they did it. They said you have to respect I, I think, the verdict. I, I, I think. I, of course, and the and the prosecutor has said that too. That <laughs> but you, she calls him a murderer. Have, that you have to respect the verdict, but she disagrees with the verdict. That's not what she exactly, said. She said is, he's a murderer. Exactly, which is exactly, of course, she thinks he's a murderer. But you say she of course, Eric, and I've had. Are you say of course? I had Alan Dershowitz, Lee Sweel, Andy McCarthy, Paul Callen, and and and, and, and another defense attorney all on the day that this happened, and four of them I had to inform it happened because it was brand new. Every one of them were like, "What? This is not done." This is I'm, not done, I'm and you're sorry. like, of course, I'm, of course. I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry, but they have, they must have really short memories. Really? Okay. All right. Let's because go. because there there are plenty of times when prosecutors say we respect the jury process, we respect the jury's verdict, but we respectfully disagree with. And it. you could and, respectfully and I, and I think, disagree, but I, not I call them a murderer. And, and I think the O.J. Simpson not case call, is a but perfect, you could respectfully is, is, disagree. Is a, is, a, is a perfect example Eric. where not not only the prosecutors, but many people who watch that case. Disagreed with the jury. Well, I'm not verdict, talking about many people. And they felt that he was a murderer. Right. I'm not talking and, and, about many so people. That, so I'm now, talking about so, the prosecutor. So sudden, that's not a that's not a, a, a great thing to do when you're referring to George Zimmerman, but it's okay to do when you're right. talking about. Okay, right. So well, you haven't shown me where Marsha Clark it. said anything, and you're saying other people, and I'm talking about I, specifically I'm so, I, Angela I'm, I'm Corey, sorry, I, and you're defending do, her. I'm not equipped to do a Google search while we're talking. Okay. Well, here, if I, you find it, email it to me because I don't believe you're true. I don't believe you're being right. I mean, Marsha Clark. Marsha Clark became a TV commentator uh, on the strength of her assertion that uh, O.J. Simpson was guilty of a crime and didn't get convicted of it. I, 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 I'm no, she became. You, she, I'm flabbergasted look, that you were taking this. this uh, look, you and, said respectfully. And I, and I think, you I, said you really, said you could respect. All right, you got to bring him down because again, this is my show. I, I, I shouldn't have to shout to get a word in in a conversation. You said you could respectfully disagree with some, with the verdict and say the jury was wrong. If Marsha Clark went out and said O.J. Simpson is a murderer the day after the verdict, you show it to me and I'll give $500 to your favorite charity. How's that? <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, okay, All right. deal. All right, Eric, thank you very much. You know, you know how to reach us. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Really? Just unbelievable. Can you imagine Marsha Clark during that racially charged case on the day after the verdict saying he's, O.J. Simpson's a murderer? The next day, if he could show me that she did that, $500 to his favorite charity. That was Eric Deggins, TV and media critic for the Tampa Bay Times and author of Race Bader, <clears throat> How the Media Wields Dangerous Words to Divide a Nation. Gee, what qualifies him to write that book? We're coming back, folks, on the Steve Malzberg Show. The Steve Malzberg Show. Obama wants your money, and he's determined to get it. He wants your money to buy off unions, his Wall Street cronies, and to expand the Obama welfare nation. Well, Swiss America is determined to stop him from stealing your money. They want to send you an award-winning film, I Want Your Money, on DVD that exposes his plan. It'll help keep the government's hands off your money using gold, silver, and other hard asset strategies to protect your hard-earned money. Call today and request the DVD, I Want Your Money, normally $19.95, yours absolutely free. Let Swiss America show you how to use gold, 
silver, and other hard assets to protect your hard-earned money. Call now. 800-978-3907. 800-978-3907. Call Swiss America right now. Learn all about investing in gold. 800-978-3907. That's 800-978-3907. Call right now. Attention, if you've been classified as a high-risk driver due to DUI, DWI, or tickets for aggressive driving and are required to get expensive and hard-to-find SR-22 auto insurance, then you must listen to this message because we can help. We're the largest insurance company in the U.S. specializing in SR-22 auto insurance and focused on serving the needs of customers classified by the state as high-risk drivers. We help people get back on their feet by providing easy-to-get, low-cost SR-22 insurance that anyone can afford. If you you need SR-22 auto insurance, or if you have it now and are paying too much, you need to call us today for your free quote at 800-836-4606. Our specialists are standing by waiting for your call. We understand people make mistakes, and we're here to help by making SR-22 insurance easy to get and affordable for everyone. The call and quote are free. Call us now at 800-836-4606. That's 800-836-4606. Again, 800-836-4606. You've heard the allegations on the news, and during the big game, pro football players have been using deer antler velvet to get a competitive edge. Banned at the London Games for its performance-enhancing qualities. Forbidden in major sports leagues for being an unfair advantage to athletes. Deer antler velvet is now in stock and available to try for free for a limited time only. Athletes have been using it for years for increased strength, increased endurance, muscle mass stress reduction, and yes, greatly enhanced libido. Everyone's talking about this miracle substance so powerful, it's being banned by professionals professional sports organizations, but for a limited time, it's being made available to the general public. Best of all, you can try it for free by calling 800-678-5153. That's right. Get Superior Velvet for free. If you're looking to boost your performance on the field and between the sheets, get the most powerful proven product used by athletes for years now for free. Claim your free bottle today by calling 800-678-5153. That's 800-678-5153. Again, 800-678-5153. Do you owe the IRS? Do you have unfiled tax returns? Have you received a wage garnishment or bank levy? Maybe a lien has been filed against you. OMG Tax can help you with all your IRS tax problems. Don't wait another second. Take action now. Call my team at OMG Tax. Honest and professional, we don't make false promises. If you owe back taxes or if the IRS is garnishing your paycheck, you need help now. OMG Tax can help you get your life back to normal. If you're serious about handling your tax matter, call OMG Tax now and get the peace of mind you deserve. Don't let the IRS take your next paycheck. Stop waiting and call our team at OMG Tax. OMG Tax has a straightforward, no-nonsense approach and has helped many Americans resolve their IRS nightmare. Call OMG Tax now. Call 1-800-255-6485. That's 1-800-255-6485. 800-255-6485. Sure, Steve might be a bit of a hypochondriac, but he never gets sick of breaking news. This is the Steve Malzberg Show. Call Steve at 1-855-777-9660. That's 1-855-777-9660. Here's... Steve Malsberg. All right, folks, we'll come back. Short segment, very short segment, because we went long in the last one. Daniel Pipes joins us next on the Steve Malsberg Show. Oh, I got 10 more seconds. Watch this. I'm going to take my time now. <sighs> on the Steve Malsberg Show. The Steve Malsberg Show. Newsmax Magazine is proud to present a special tribute to our 40th president, Ronald Reagan. It's a very special documentary and commemorative issue of Newsmax magazine celebrating the centennial of President Reagan's birth. First, here's a video clip from the award-winning documentary, Rendezvous with Destiny. We're in the midst of a springtime of hopeful America. You ain't seen nothing yet. Impulses of an evil empire. Tear down this wall. I believe that together we can keep this Rendezvous with Destiny. 
In the next several minutes, you will learn things about President Ronald Reagan that you've never seen, heard, or read before. Welcome to today's special Newsmax event, celebrating the life and legacy of President Reagan. During this historic presentation, we will commemorate President Reagan's storied life. We'll revisit his two terms in office and recollect his proudest achievements and greatest challenges. Ronald Reagan's life reads like a fairy tale of success stories. He was an accomplished athlete, an honored veteran, a famous actor, the governor of California, and of course, our nation's 40th president. He called himself a citizen politician and only entered politics when he warned government was gaining too much power. By then he was age 54 with a successful career behind him. Twice elected president of the United States, Ronald Wilson Reagan was a contradiction to some, once a Democrat, then a Republican, a champion of smaller government whose own government grew, a fiscal conservative who failed to balance the budget. His critics mistook his affability for weakness, but behind the smile and the charm existed an extraordinary leader with unique skills and bold and revolutionary ideas. We only had time to share just a few of the top defining moments in Ronald Reagan's presidency, but you'll get to see them all in Rendezvous with Destiny. By the way, the president's close relationship with the Pope is especially fascinating. You'll also learn how dealing with an alcoholic father helped shape Reagan's ability to negotiate. And if you ever wondered what the leader of the free world likes to get for the holidays, well, you'll find that out as well. So let's review today in this free offer. We are sending you a copy of Ronald Reagan, Rendezvous with Destiny, and the collector's limited edition of our issue commemorating the 100th anniversary of President Reagan's birth. Right now, when you subscribe to Newsmax Magazine, you can own both the DVD and receive the special Reagan 100th birthday commemorative edition. That's $25 in bonus gifts when you subscribe. Go to Newsmax.com backslash Reagan 13 to subscribe today. Join the millions who read Newsmax Magazine every month. Actor portrayal, potential customer experience, your experience will vary. I was overwhelmed with credit card debt, losing sleep, worrying about money all the time. Creditors were hounding me night and day, and I didn't think there was any way I could ever get out of debt or get my life back. Then a friend told me about the Financial Solutions Group, and I found out all it took to get started was one free call. They really helped me get my life back. If you're like I was, you could see almost half or more of your credit card balances eliminated without the nightmare of bankruptcy or attorney's fees, and they didn't charge me any settlement fees till they reduced my debt. If you have more than $10,000 in credit card debt, this is your chance to get your life back. Make one quick free call today, right now, to see if you qualify. 1-800-477-6802. That's 1-800-477-6802. Again, 1-800-477-6802. 1-800-477-6802. This is not your typical Scream Fest talk show. No. 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 This is the next generation of talk radio. Here is Steve Malzberg. All right, folks. Uh, final half hour of the Wednesday edition of the Steve Malzberg Show. And we're joined by, um, really, uh, w one of the great uh, voices and, 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 and writers and minds when it comes to uh, uh, what is actually going on in our world around us, both here in the United States uh, and uh, and abroad? And uh, we welcome in Dr. Daniel Pipes, founder and director of the Middle East Forum. Uh, uh, Daniel, great to speak to you again, sir. Good to talk to you, Steve. All right, I have a question before we get to Egypt and uh, and, and other I issues. Uh, uh, are you aware of the uh, the controversy today surrounding uh, Rolling Stone magazine? We're going to put it up on our screen for those watching at Newsmax uh, uh, com, Newsmax TV. Uh, Rolling Stone magazine has done a, a rock star treatment of uh, the Boston Marathon bomber, uh, giving him a full front page uh, cover story with a glossy picture and the whole thing. Uh, have you seen that? 
No, I haven't. I heard of it, but I haven't seen it. What's your What's your take on that? I mean, the, uh, uh, you know, uh, once Pierce Morgan weighs in on Twitter and says it's a it's a journalistically speaking, it's a must read, uh, a very uh, uh, you know urgent ur urgently needed uh, piece that was written in Rolling Stone. Right away, I know it's bad, but I don't need Pierce Morgan to tell me there's something really twisted and sick about that. Yeah, there is. Well, in the immediate aftermath of his being apprehended, um, because he's a handsome young man, there was this flurry of um, kind of female reaction, you know, a nice, nice looking guy, and this shouldn't be happening to him. Uh, and then came the leftist reaction that, uh, wait a minute, you know, he, he's a victim. He's not a perpetrator. And I think this is a combination of those two urges. Right. Um, he was led astray. He was a follower with his brother. He didn't know what he was doing, that kind of thing. Yeah, I think the fact that he's, at least the picture we've all seen repeatedly of him is, is a very handsome one, is a significant role here. For example, there was a parallel over a decade ago in 2002 with the Beltway snipers. It was an older man and a younger man, and um, well, clearly the younger man was influenced, but they weren't brothers, um, influenced by the older man, but there wasn't a surge of sympathy for him as there was. Uh, for the younger Tsunayev brother. Right, and I and I, I think of what's going on in the media today that we've been covering uh, almost ad nauseum here on this show, uh, and, and George Zimmerman uh, has to go into hiding. If any magazine dared to put George Zimmerman on the cover in any uh, glorificating uh, you know, way of glorific glorifying him, and yet we have a, a, a terrorist murderer, an Islamic terrorist murderer, who killed three people and 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 and, and parallel and you know and, and and maimed many many more, uh, and and he gets on a cover of Rolling Stone magazine, and I haven't heard boo about it from the mainstream media. He's certainly not complaining about it. It's a good comparison. Yeah, you know? it's a telling one. All right, well, let's move on to uh, Egypt, if we can, uh, Daniel. And, uh, you know, uh, you, I read your, your pieces recently uh, about what's going on there, and we seem to be at a, at least a media lull of sorts. Uh, we're, uh, we're just, uh, you know, just, uh, I guess, uh, treading water right now. But um, where do you think we're headed? I saw, the, I saw this administration just the other day, maybe yesterday, I forget, not surprisingly in my mind, and I'm sure not surprising to you, uh, issue a statement that uh, if Egypt's going to move ahead with democracy and, and democratic elections, the Muslim Brotherhood must be included. It seems like they're still in a state of shock in the White House and the State Department that their beloved Muslim Brotherhood suffered uh, the defeat it suffered. And there's also this obsession with democracy, with process. Now, democracy is important, but there are times when democracy is not the most important thing. And when you have what is arguably the world's largest political demonstration ever anywhere take place, uh, you don't focus on democracy so much. Furthermore, I would argue, and I'm in a very small minority here, but I would argue that Morsi was not um, properly elected, that it was fraud, that it took a week between his, between the election back a year ago and his being announced to have 51.5% of the vote. It's an intricate subject. I won't go into it here, but I've never accepted, not the time and not now, that he actually won this election. I think the whole political process, the whole voting process in Egypt in 2011 and 12 was was fraught with with um, you know, with, with problems. So uh, even putting that aside, even if he were properly elected, at a certain point you are dealing with a government that is inept, that is hostile, that is enormously unpopular, and you have to pay attention to the larger issues which the White House, State Department, refuse to do. Well, uh, yeah, and you know, and further than that, uh, we we heard from John Brennan uh, years gone by that the Muslim Brotherhood is a peaceful uh, organization. There's no threat to anybody uh, in Egypt specifically. I think he was talking about, uh, and we could go into the influence of the Muslim Brotherhood and their offshoots here in this government. But that, as you say, it might be for another time, as you alluded to with a different topic. But let's let's talk about going forward. I mean, um, you know, we're, we're hearing all kinds of hor horrific stories uh, about uh, what's happening to the cops now uh, from supporters of Morsi and from the Muslim Brotherhood. They're under attack, as they were, uh, uh, you know, under Morsi and at least under Mubarak, where, although they weren't treated well, uh, and you could say this about a lot of things under Mubarak, um, I, think, I think Mubarak met our national security needs and Israel's national security needs and the needs to a larger extent of the minority community of Copts in Egypt so much better than, uh, than, than Morsi certainly and what's going on now and, and, and where do you think, uh, how do you think it'll play out in the future? 
But before we get to the future, let me just respond to your assessment of Mubarak. I completely agree with you that Mubarak, or now Sisi, uh, or between them, Tantawi, the military rulers, are better than the Muslim Brotherhood. I agree with that entirely. That is not to say that one should uh, value them or evaluate them positively. From the Coptic point of view, Mubarak was a misery. From Israel's point of view, uh, Mubarak was a misery. Uh, and from many other points of view, he, he was, from an economic point of view, he was miserable. There's, there's really nothing good to be said about Mubarak except that he's better than the uh, Brotherhood. Uh, I, I don't think we should make this into you know, glorify him. No, no, no. And, and, and let me make and, clear, I'm in no way glorifying a ruthless dictator, but I just I just think that if for it, 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 as compared to what we got and what the, the administration, our administration probably knew we would get somehow, uh, I just think that they, you know, they would have been better off uh, in the interest of the United States, and that's who we're supposed to be governing for when you're governing in this country. Uh, it might have been better to leave Mubarak alone. I could be wrong, but that's just my opinion. Short term. But long term, there had to be something that took like what took place. There had to be a popular rebellion against a ruthless autocracy at a certain point. Egypt had been ruled for nearly 60 years by military dictators, and something is near the burst. And, it, and we can still have hope that a better system will emerge than what was under and Mubarak. It was miserable. Uh, let's not you know, romanticize it. It was miserable. I could go on. Right, right. Go on. I can I can go on and on about how miserable it was. But yes, this Muslim Brotherhood is worse. Now turning to the future, I have too much to say about it. Um, it is clear in the aftermath. It's only two weeks exactly since the uh, since Morsi was overthrown. So it's not much time. It's clear that the Muslim Brotherhood is not going gently into the night. That it is. I use its formidable organization to make trouble, to resist, to create uh, traffic jams, to uh, use violence, to try to take over control of confidence, and who knows what else they're about to do. But how far will they go? Will they really go for a full-scale civil insurrection? Then I, 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 I don't have much to say. I don't know. I don't have an understanding of the ships. Okay. Thinking, and they could pull back. Okay. No. Uh, yeah. Well. Okay. Um, and uh, we're, we're unfortunately the cell phone's dropping out uh, a, a little bit. Uh, but always good to talk to you, Daniel. And I uh, I appreciate it. And uh, we could read you at uh, at uh, DanielPipes.org as well as uh, at the Middle East Forum. Correct. That's right. Okay. Thank you, Daniel Pipes, ladies and gentlemen, uh, founder and director of uh, the Middle East Forum, here on the uh, Steve Malsberg show. I'm watching also out of the corner of my eye. Of course, the myth continues to perpetuate. Jesse Jackson uh, uh, talking about uh, debating uh, the stand your ground laws, which again, I don't know why de we're debating stand your ground laws. It had nothing to do with the Martin case. Nonetheless, um, saying that Jess Jackson saying that Zimmerman pursued Trayvon Martin against the wishes of the dispatcher. Of course, this has become such, such a myth. And I, I know I harp on it all the time, but I, 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 it just amazes me. Are these people, do they really believe it? Well, I guess they could really believe it. Because Alveda King believed it until I corrected her. That, you know, he was told, not, he, they, they told him not to get out of the car. Now, Jackson didn't say that, but he did not pursue against the wishes of the dispatcher. Again, the dispatcher testified in court that, yes, by asking George Zimmerman to tell me what else he's doing, do you see him doing anything else? Could have, in fact, been interpreted by George Zimmerman to follow him, to answer that question, right? Uh, and, of course, we all know that when he was asked, are you following him, he was already following him. And when he was told, we don't need you to do that, he said, okay. And then, according to George Zimmerman, that's when he turned around to go back to his car, and that's when he was hit. So where this comes from that he, he followed him against the orders. He was told, don't get out of your car. It's just fiction. And I harp on it because it's such a key part of the whole prosecution's theory and all these so-called civil rights leaders' theory that, oh, if he just obeyed orders and stayed in his car, none of this would have happened. Well, he was never told to stay in his car. It's a little you know, technicality, I guess. But if your whole case is premised on the fact that he disobeyed orders and got out of his car, and he was never told to stay in his car and didn't disobey orders, then you really have no case. 
So that's why I harp on it, because I, I can't stand the disinformation, the misinformation, the lies, the stupidity of it all. I mean, for crying out loud, listen to the tape. It's about two minutes long. Learn something. And you can almost excuse Jesse Jackson and the others because they believe what they hear from Wolf Blitzer. You can't excuse Wolf Blitzer. In my view, you can't excuse other people that have been on this show that, that insisted upon telling the lie over and over and over again. And then when confronted on Twitter after the fact, they say, what do you make it such a big deal about this? Well, what do you mean, why am I making such a big Why does it matter so much to you? It's one little fact. No, it's not. If it was, you wouldn't repeat it as the centerpiece of your theory as to why George Zimmerman was guilty. Because in your mind, he's guilty because he profiled, he chased, he pursued, he disobeyed orders. And if he didn't do that, then your whole theory is shot to heck, which it was shot to heck anyway. So that's why it's so big. So when you, when you come on here and misrepresent the facts and lie about the facts and then call me a liar back for telling the truth, and then when I confront you on Twitter and you say, well, why do you care so much? It's one little fact. You're being totally disingenuous. And any educated person could see through that. Just so you know. Just so you know. We see through what's going on out there. Anyway, uh, we're going to come back right here. One final segment. You want to weigh in on any of this? Anybody want to weigh in on, on this Zimmerman case anymore? What you heard from Mark O'Mara earlier with me today. And how about... Scott Garrett, my congressman, an hour and 15 minutes ago telling us, oh no, two hours and 15 minutes ago telling us that the Republicans are not, he wants them to, but the leadership in the House will not defund Obamacare. They will not defund Obamacare because they don't want to have that confrontation with the president where they could possibly shut the government down. Cowardly. On the Steve Malzberg Show. The Steve Malzberg Show. Attention hip implant patients. Are you in constant pain? Have you received a letter from your doctor about your implant? Have you had or need a revision surgery? Do you have high levels of metal, chromium, or cobalt in your blood? Over 90,000 hip implant devices have been recalled due to defects and failures resulting in revision or replacement surgery. If you have a recalled hip implant, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call 800-460-1530 to see if your implant is affected by the recalls. If you or a loved one has a defective or recalled hip implant, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call 800-460-1530. That's 800-460-1530. Protect your legal rights today. Call 800-460-1530. This is an advertisement, not valid in all states. Paid non-attorney spokesperson. iLawsuit.com is an advertising group that represents lawyers advertising their services and is a free matching service for consumers. It is not a law firm or lawyer referral service. In 2013, half of your friends, family, and neighbors may lose their jobs, and you may be forced to watch helplessly as you are robbed of 90% of your life savings all while your home's value is eradicated. Controversial economist Robert Wiedemer believes we will soon stare down a secret crisis that will rival the Great Depression. It was Wiedemer's 2005 book, America's Bubble Economy, that warned of coming meltdowns in our housing and stock markets. Washington did not heed his call, and folks on Main Street lost $50 trillion from the recession. His New York Times best-selling book, Aftershock, predicted our federal debt and dollar would be the next bubbles to burst. And now Robert Wiedemer has released a startling video with shocking evidence the powers that be have tried to ban. But that hasn't stopped 50 million people from getting the truth. Join us at Aftershock2013.com. Aftershock2013.com. Hi, this is Mike Reagan. Folks ask me, what would Ronald Reagan do if he were with us today? I believe the first thing he'd do is stop Obamacare. Already it's in effect with higher taxes, hidden fees, skyrocketing insurance rates, big Medicare cuts, and some insurance plans are hit with a 40% tax. Protect yourself by getting the Obamacare Survival Guide. It's already a number one New York Times bestseller. Newsmax says it's the best guide to the new law, giving you the strategies, tips, and loopholes you need to know. If you're insured on Medicare, a business owner, a medical professional, just about anyone, you need this book. 
Get the number one bestseller, The Obamacare Survival Guide, at bookstores everywhere. Or get our special $4.95 offer and save $15 off the cover price. Scroll down now to claim your copy of Obamacare Survival Guide for the special internet offer of only $4.95. This is the worst weather we've seen in quite some time, folks, and I don't see any end in sight. People have been calling in from across the state complaining their basements are flooding. One guy said he now has an indoor swimming pool in his basement. I told him he needs the waterproofing innovations from basement systems. If you want a dry basement or crawl space that will weather any kind of storm, you need the patented solutions from basement systems. You've seen them on home makeover shows throughout the country. With a lifetime warranty, every solution is custom designed for your basement. You can finally have that room you've always wanted with our total basement finishing system. Call now for a free estimate, and you'll never have to worry about storms like these again. Call now for your free basement inspection at 800-516-9794, 800-516-9794. Learn how to waterproof your basement now. Call this number, 800-516-9794, 800-516-9794. One hundred and fifty million people suffer from headaches. All you want is for the pounding in your head to stop. Migralex stops the pounding. Migralex was developed by a neurologist and founder of the New York Headache Center. I am neurologist Dr. Alex Mauskop. After studying and researching the human brain for 25 years, I've developed Migralex, which eliminates pounding headaches. It works for my patients, and I'm so convinced it will work for you. I don't just guarantee it. I put my name on it. Dr. Mauskop's Migralex gets rid of headaches fast without harsh caffeine, sodium, or preservatives. Migralex works unbelievably fast. And it's gentle on my stomach. Find out how to get your free bottle of Migralex. Call 800-532-2967. Plus, if you're one of the first 100 callers, you'll also receive the Migralex Quick Tips to Headache Relief absolutely free. That's 800-532-2967. Or go to MigralexRelief.com. M-I-G-R-A-L-E-X Relief.com. Or call 800-532-2967. Phones hot. Satellite link established. Studio lights illuminated. Cameras rolling. Audio and video encoders firing ones and zeros. Internet stream. Um, is streaming. The most technology advanced radio show is on the air. Here's the captain of this enterprise, Steve Malsberg. All right, folks. Um, got an interesting, uh, interesting story. Uh, you know that uh, Edward Snowden. Uh, either has officially or says he's going to, or it appears that he wants to stay in Russia. Now, he opted for some unknown reason. He opted against Venezuela and the Latin American countries and, um, and, and has decided that he, he, he might want to stay in, uh, in Russia. Now, um, as a result of, of that, that rumored story, um, Lindsey Graham, Lindsey Graham, you know, what could I say? But on this issue, I think you might have a point. Uh, Lindsey Graham, South Carolina Republican, told The Hill that he would support a boycott, a boycott uh, of the Olympics over Snowden if, in fact, um, they allow him to have uh, refuge in Russia. John Boehner, coward, coward, John Boehner. That's what I'm going to call him from now on. Congressman Coward. Speaker Coward. If my Congressman Scott Garrett is right, and that leadership of the Republicans in the House will not defund any aspect of Obamacare because they fear Obama will veto that in a general budget and it'll bring about a shutdown of the government. And, of course, and apparently the Republicans are afraid they'll be blamed. The Republicans will feel it's an issue. They can't win. Baloney. Baloney. Salami, salami, baloney, as they used to say on uh, Popeye, I think it was. Popeye the sailor, man. Woo-hoo. Actually, I do that in a bottle real well. I drink Perrier water out there in the bottle, and I, I do it. Everybody here could attest to that. I do that real well. But I, I agree with Lindsey Graham. John Boehner, coward. That's where I got sidetracked into this whole thing. Coward. Congressman Coward, Speaker Coward, um, says Lindsey Graham was dead wrong 
to suggest uh, the boycott uh, if Russia grants asylum to, uh, to Edward Snowden. He says, I love Senator Graham. We've been close friends for 20 years. That might explain some of the problem. Uh, but I think he's dead wrong. Why would we want to punish U.S. athletes who have been training for three years to compete in the Olympics over a traitor who can't find a place to call home? And Graham says, I would just send the Russians the most unequivocal signal I could send them. Graham said an Olympic boycott might help because what they're doing is outrageous. We certainly haven't, re, uh, uh, haven't reset our relationship with Russia in a positive way. And at the end of the day, he says, if they grant this guy asylum, it's a breach of the rule of law as we know it, and it's a slap in the face to the United States. Meanwhile, a top Russian lawmaker close to Vladimir Putin also slammed Graham's call for a boycott, siding with Congressman Coward. <laughs> Alexei Pushkov. Pushkov. Not, not related to Alexei Pushoff. This is Pushkov. Um, head of the, uh, the uh, Duma's Foreign Affairs Committee told Russia's RIA Navotsky... Senator Graham's calls for boycott, uh, to boycott the Olympic Games because of the Snowden affair kicks us back to the remote past, to the times of mutual boycotts when our two countries looked at each other through, figuratively speaking, nuclear sight. Whoa. Whoa. Um, and Putin said today that U.S.-Russian relations are, quote, far more important than the dispute over Snowden. I remember the boycott. I remember the price our athletes had to pay when they boycotted the when we boycotted the Olympics. You remember the boycott? I understand that athletes have trained. I understand that. But sometimes, Congressman Boehner, sometimes, Mr. Speaker, and this is not to defend Lindsey Graham. Believe me, the last thing I want to do is defend Lindsey Graham. But sometimes, Congressman, you have to take a stand. And by taking that stand, there will be repercussions. Things will happen that might not be easy, that might not be easy to deal with, and that not everybody's going to like and not everybody's going to praise you for doing. But sometimes you've got to take that stand. And you don't want to take that stand here or threaten to take that stand here the way Lindsey Graham does, do you, Congressman? Oh, no, 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 no. This isn't big enough for that. He's just a traitor. And if the Russians spit in our face and give him asylum, why should we want to punish the Russians back? Nah. Nah. Nyet. Nyet. Why don't you say nyet, Congressman Boehner? That would endear you to the Russians. Nyet. Now, don't you see a little consistency here based on what we found out from Scott Garrett today? Boehner doesn't want to... Nah. Nyet to a possible Olympic boycott and yet to raising the ire of Barack Obama and forcing a showdown, forcing a possible government, a, 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 a constitutional crisis, if you will, not a constitutional crisis, but a government sh shutdown, not showdown, a showdown with Obama over a possible government showdown. Whereas if Boehner's Republican Party and the majority in the House says we will just defund this portion of Obamacare. And it's in the budget. And then Obama says, I'm not signing it, I veto it. And as a result of the veto, he shuts down the entire government. Then who's to blame? Let the public decide, Congressman. Don't run from this like you run from everything else. Defund Obamacare. Don't just keep voting to end it. Do something about it. Congressman Boehner, stop saying yet. Otherwise, get out of the speakership. Give someone else a chance who has some guts.